the NFL came to Tottenham in 2019. We were always here. The NFL Academy were the first to step on this field. We practiced here in 2021 and got the taste for it. Now, now it's time, time to play, play here for real. real. The NFL Academy is the UK's home team. Now it's time for us to ball out on the biggest stage. We'll be catching touchdowns in this amazing stadium. We'll be making sacks in this amazing stadium. NFL Academy versus Erasmus Hall. Good evening and welcome to the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, the home of the NFL in the UK. On Sunday, the Buffalo Bills and the Jacksonville Jaguars were playing on this very field. Today, it's the turn of the NFL Academy welcoming to the UK Erasmus Hall. A momentous occasion, the final of a trio of games here in the UK as the NFL Academy show us all what they can do. I'm John Jackson, joined by former Buffalo Bills coach Phoebe Schechter. And Phoebe, this is an incredible stadium and what an occasion for these players. Oh my goodness, and you alluded to it there, right? You get to play on the same field that Josh Allen and Trevor Lawrence has only just recently played on. And what, I mean, look around, this is incredible. Under the lights, I mean, this is everything you could ask for and more as a football player. <laughs> it really is, and honestly, you know, there are people here, you know, starting to get their seats. And if you are in the Tottenham area, there is still time to get down here, right? <laughs> You've got about 35 minutes until, Join we, us. <laughs> until we kick off here. But, you know, for the LFN Academy, you know, to be aligned with Loughborough College and Loughborough University and, and to have this available since 2019, it's such a huge thing if, you know, you've grown up being a fan of a sport that in the UK is very much growing, but not something that most kids will play. No, and before the NFL Academy, there really weren't the same level of opportunities, right? Especially for that secondary age, going to college uh, age group there. And so now pairing up with Loughborough Academy, college you've got strength and conditioning you've got nutrition you've got physiotherapy I mean there's so many elements to being a professional athlete that Loughborough are able to help with and again the level of the of the coaching staff has continued to improve we've seen Lamont Wilson come in Steve Hager the head coach you know all of these are huge upgrades to the team to really get it to where we want it to be right which is getting more of these athletes able to play in the NFL yeah and you know we were at Loughborough just the other day at Loughborough University and, and and some of the facilities there, we had a look round. Absolutely incredible <laughs> facilities. Honestly, I wish I'd gone to Loughborough University because it's, you know, it's just so good. You mentioned uh, Lamont Wilson, uh, Winston. Sorry. Let's hear from the man himself now, speaking with Carl Walkinshaw. I'm here with Lamont Winston, the head of the NFL Academy. So good to see you here again, uh, Lamont. And how's it feel being at Tottenham Hotspur Stadium? Oh, what a beautiful stadium! I mean, this is absolutely gorgeous. It rivals all the. NFL stadiums in the U.S. I mean, this thing has everything. So it's, a, it's an honor and a pleasure for us to be able to compete and play uh, in this venue. Great experience for our young men. Tell us a bit about your experience, because you have a rich experience, and you're like the grandfather of character development in the NFL, and you've done a whole lot of stuff. And, and here you are helping, you know, international kids 16 to 19 years in the NFL Academy. Tell us a little bit about your background, how you ended up here. Well, you know, uh, from Oakland, California, I came up, uh, my brother and I, my, uh, uh, the sisters and brothers, but my brother Kevin is in football as well with the Carolina Panthers. We've just been fortunate to be in football, and football has taken our careers uh, and lives and our families a whole different way. I started in junior college, high school, junior college, you know, Division II, uh, uh, you know, Division I, uh, with the Chiefs for, camp for 17 years, and player personnel and player engagement in the Oakland Raiders. So, this whole thing in sports has allowed me to have a rich experience and be able to impact lives wherever I can. And what about the kids that will be here today, the 16 to 19 year olds? What sort of experience is it going to be for them to play in uh, such a stadium such as this? You know, th th this is f for all of them, both teams. This is an opportunity to play in the pro stadium. I remember my son Cameron played his Pop Warner game uh, uh, at uh, Arrowhead Stadium. Okay, and what it meant to them. I mean, this is, this is a phenomenal opportunity for everybody involved, coaches, players, support staff, um, our fans, our, our, our local media, uh, our sponsors, uh, uh, sponsorship, Nike, Riddell, um, you know, Loughborough College, Loughborough University, uh, Wilson Football. So this is great for everybody. 
Now, Friday night, just turning our attention a little bit backwards, you beat IMG Academy uh, at Loughborough. That was a big win for these guys, wasn't it? Because it was your first win against American opposition. Did it feel on Friday you'd really turned a corner? Uh, yeah, actually, we. it's a long corner, though, okay? <laughs> remember, it's a long corner, and it just got we were here tonight. But uh, any win that you can get at any level, uh, especially in football, is a huge win. Uh, it's a reward to the young men and, uh, that have practiced hard, the coaches that have put in the time to get them prepared uh, for the families who sacrificed. So it's always great to, to get a win. That's what we're doing it for. And so I think, you know, last, last week's game gives us an opportunity to say, okay, you know, give us one more step. And so here we are tonight. We have to compete again. Lamont Winston, so good to talk to you. Thank you ever so much for joining us here on the stream. We wish you good luck for the game. Well, thank you so much. And again, I can't uh, thank uh, the, the, the people of Loughborough. Uh, that, that, that town is a great town. And all the students there, hope they're watching tonight. Uh, but anyway, we appreciate you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lamont Winston. Lamont Winston there speaking with Carl Walkinshaw, a guy with an incredibly cool voice, but also a guy that's been there, he's done it, and, and he's made a huge impact uh, here in the NFL Academy in the UK. He is, and we heard Carl there talking about the culture that he brings to a team, and he has done that for so many years in his career that he knows how to really build up that culture. And so to see that here, to see how it's changing the NFL Academy, even in the few amount little bit amount of time that he's been here is incredible and it just says so much hope for the future yeah and we've obviously seen the players you know warming up where you actually were here earlier on when they arrived and you know they came out and they were looking at the stadium and when you first walk into the stadium it's a little bit you know wow okay I'm <laughs> playing in the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium you know and they were getting off the bus here and you could just tell how excited they were because uh, it's not every day you get to play in a, a proper NFL stadium not at all but I mean to be honest with you the NFL players are doing the same thing there's no way that you could walk in here and not immediately look up look around I mean you look at the the locker room and seeing your name up there it is just so inspiring I mean again this is such a opportunity and, and a great platform for both sides of the ball here to be able to express themselves and express their athleticism yeah and also you know the players were arriving earlier on and I was watching them walking past the guys putting up the branding for the Tennessee Titans who are here on Sunday <laughs> you know against the Ravens and that must be something as well because a lot of these guys are aiming towards playing for a franchise in the NFL and to see those brands there that's going to spur you on even more isn't it oh absolutely i mean can you imagine thinking x amount of years from now when some of these players will be remembering hey i was in that same locker room when i was an nfl academy player now i might be walking in as an nfl player and that's really quite special it really really well now as i mentioned this is the third of three games there was a game over in ireland which we'll touch on in just a second phoebe but last time out at loughborough university uh, it was the img academy who were in town and it was a pretty good day for the nfl academy me. Back in the end zone, oh, wide open, touchdown! Yeah, a 31-14 win for the NFL Academy against IMG Academy. And Phoebe, you know, I was with Christian Scotland Williamson, who's played for the Pittsburgh Steelers for a couple of years, and he said progress. That was the word that he could come up with. He watched that because it's the first time the NFL Academy have beaten an American opponent, and, and that is huge, isn't it? It is. And IMG Academy is no joke, right? I mean, you and I also watched them last year when they played IMG, and it was a very different scoreline. But not even that. To what Christian said, it is progress. I mean, watching some of the plays now. Now, the way that these running backs are hitting those gaps, how they're laying out in the end zone defensively, it's all about pushing back and getting quick off the ball. So 
all of these small improvements across the board, it's not specific to one positional group, has just been immense. And that's what's going to make today so interesting. It yeah, really, really will. Uh, we've been watching uh, the visitors warming up. And I have to say that in the game on Friday, it was all about the tight ends and the running backs. And I believe they're all German as well. So it just shows the international appeal, both in you know, Euro uh, Europeans coming to be involved in the LFL Academy playing these Americans and beating them for the first time. Anyway, let's hear from the NFL Academy at head coach Steve Hagan. I'm here with head coach of the NFL Academy, Steve Hagan. Steve, I shall miss our talks. I, I <laughs> seem to speak to you every three or four days now, which is fantastic. But for people that didn't see the game on Friday night, tell them something about yourself, because you've got this rich history coming from the NFL and Notre Dame coaching and all sorts yeah. of stuff. And then you're, you're here at the NFL Academy. Just give us a quick potted history. Wow, quick history. So I've coached football for, I think it was college football, 28 years, and then the NFL for 12, and then the XFL and the USFL. So I've just done football my whole life, and this is a great opportunity to come over here and do football in this country now. So it's very, very challenging. It's very uh, exhilarating, very fun, and, uh, and we're learning. We're learning how to play football the American way, so that's fun. Awesome, and you had a great win on Friday night against the IMG, 31-14, but it's been ever such a quick turnaround. You had to win on Friday, and now here you are Tuesday at Tottenham Hotspur Stadium having to play Erasmus Hall. I mean, what do you do as a coach? How do you get the team prepped? I had no, I have no idea what day it is. <laughs> I just know we're playing football tonight, and um, when we came off that win, I just had to get them in the locker room and zero them back down to we got to start all over. And so we started all over the next morning, and we've just been dialed in for Erasmus Hall. That's our total focus. And uh, honestly, I haven't even let us really celebrate the other one because we need to be focused on this one. And are you suffering from any major injuries, or were the players all okay coming out of that win? I'd tell you, but I'd have to kill you. <laughs> okay, <laughs> moving on to... No, we're, 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 we're okay. We're, yeah, we're it seemed on the stream, yeah. there didn't seem to be any major injuries, yeah. so we're hoping yeah. for a full squad today. Exactly. In terms of Erasmus Hall then today, this is a really good-looking team. I mean, they've won five championships back in New York. I mean, you'll have scouted them and know more about them than I do, but what sort of challenge is it for the NFL Academy lads today? Oh, this is a much faster team than what we played. This speed that they have, they've... I just said it earlier when we were off camera, they have American speed and we'll see it all over the place. So we got to keep them contained and we got to make sure that they don't get loose. And, you know, when they do get loose, we can't flinch and we got to just come back. So um, it's a great challenge. It's a great challenge. It's a great team. So it'll be fun. And here we are at Tottenham Hotspur Stadium under the big lights. Now, you'll be used to this. You played in lots yeah, of NFL this stadiums. Nice. This, yeah. this feels more like home, I guess, for you. But in terms of the NFL Academy, the younger lads coming in, I know they've trained here, but do you feel they'll be intimidated by an environment such as this? Well, I hope not. You know, we came out, we were here earlier in the day, and we ran around the field a little bit and just told them this is just another field. It's just surrounded by a bunch of bleachers. And they're not used to that. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's it's what you get yourself into when you want when you sign up for these deals this is what you get yourself into so this is what makes it fun well we hope they have a fantastic experience steve hagan so good to speak to you again yeah. and uh, good luck for the game okay, and we look good. forward to talking to you afterwards appreciate you thank you yeah, the NFL Academy head coach, Steve Hagen there, speaking with Carl Walkinshaw. We can see him uh, giving a bit of a team talk there. And I have to say, Phoebe, you know, football is one thing, but just being involved in a team sport and growing up and, and just being, you know, a grown man, it seems to be something that these kids are learning here because they come into it at a young age through, you know, Loughborough College, as we've mentioned already, and they can progress through. And, you know, if they end up in the NFL, they've, they've really shaped themselves as part of the NFL Academy. And I think that's great. They do it, and Coach Steve does a, a huge job around that, right? Because it's never just about about really playing as an athlete. It's about, like you're saying, your character. And so much of this, you get someone in when they're 14, 15, 16, you're really young and you don't know much about yourself. And so if you can learn all of the characteristics that American football can teach about leadership, resilience, accountability, this is going to make you a better human. And, and ultimately, if some of these players do make it to the NFL, incredible. If some of them don't, they will be better citizens of this world. And that's ultimately what you want to do with the NFL Academy is create people who are going to help develop the community around them. Yeah, also discipline is something that's uh, a huge thing in football. And, you know, you see it in the NFL 
NFL and there's there's fines for all kinds of things and you might think, <laughs> whoa, okay, that's a fine for something that I shouldn't have thought that's a fine for. But, you know, it does teach you things like that. And as you say, you know, you can come into it maybe with, you know, let's just say, uh, you know, a tricky uh, level of discipline like I was at school and you come out. <laughs> you and you're, naughty, and, uh, yeah, never. And you come out and you're, you're well-shaped, you're well-rounded. And, I, you know, I think that's a great thing. You've got a fact about the opponents today, Erasmus Ooh. Hall, Phoebe, and I know you're dying to tell everyone. You know what? I love a fact. I usually, I usually have to give my facts to Neil Reynolds, you know, so I'm going to steal this one. Erasmus Hall is the second oldest school in America. Now, we may not be overly impressed with that because it was 1787, but that is incredible for the States. And, and even if you look at then the head coach, 22 years that he's been coaching with Erasmus Hall. I mean, talk about that as dedication. Yeah, Danny Lamberg has actually been very, very successful as well. You know, this team is based in Brooklyn. They play in the New York area. I think something like 56 teams. We're going to hear from him in just a second. I think he'll clarify that. Five championships. And I mean, that is seriously impressive. And, you know, you look at some of these guys out there and when they turned up, I have to say, you can tell that coach runs a very tight ship because they are, you know, you know what? They're, they're turning up, they're looking good. They, they look the part, they're all carrying their gear, they're doing exactly what they're told. You know, there is a, there's a certain level of professionalism the about this team. The standard is there, isn't it? Yeah, and I, you know, that's what I love to watch, people pregame, watch the teams pregame, watching how the players interact with each other as well, and they are a well-oiled machine. Mm. So you know that this, that this coach is just doing an incredible job with them. Yeah, the guys were getting uh, loads of different photos and selfies, as you can imagine, <laughs> as they come out in the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Uh, let's hear from uh, Danny Lamberg now, the head coach of Erasmus. I'm here with coach Daniel Landberg all the way from New York City, Brooklyn itself. Here you are in London, Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. How's it feeling, coach? It's, it's overwhelming. It's amazing. This place is very humbling and we're very lucky to be here. Now, what, when did you arrive and what have you been doing over the last few days here in London? So we left on a Thursday night and we arrived Friday morning and um, we've been just enjoying ourselves. We went on a tour of, this, of the city, uh, Buckingham Palace, uh, uh, Westminster Abbey, uh, the King's Tower, and um, we've been doing some community service across the street with the young boys and bo boys and girls from Duke's Academy, and just been it's been surreal. Sounds amazing. And what what sort of experience is it for these young men? Is it all about the football, or is it more than that for them? No, I I think it's way more than just football. Like to me, the football is irrelevant. It's really culture building, bonding. Um, you know, the, a lot of our kids don't even get out of New York City ever. So the opportunity for these kids to come out here overseas is something that they will absolutely never forget because I won't ever forget it, you know. Um, so for everybody, I think also, I think it's actually more just even brought cl close together. Mm, nice. And in terms of Erasmus Hall, they're a very proud organization. You won five championships. Tell us a little bit about the league that you play in back there in New York. Well, we're, we represent PSAL, Public Schools Athletic League, um, based up of all the, all the, uh, the boroughs in New York City. Um, and we are, I think we have about 56 teams in, in, in total. Um, we won the first ch championship in 2012 with Curtis Samuel, plays for the Washington Commodores. And in 2018, 2019, uh, 20 was COVID, that didn't happen, and then 21 and 22. And um, here we are right now. So plenty of alumni and there'll be plenty of support back home. But what challenge does NFL Academy bring to this team today for you guys? Well, I think for one is the size and the age. I think we're a little bit younger, and uh, I think that you guys have a little bit older in age uh, than we are. I think that you guys can pull from different countries that we don't get that opportunity to do. Um, we also had to come here overseas, so it might be some jet lag and some, op you know, we don't have our normal equipment that we usually have. So, hey, we, we signed up for it, so no complaints here. And in terms of the players to watch today on your squad, is there anyone in particular in the booth we should be looking out for down on the field? There's a several players I think you should be looking at. I think number one would be our nose tackle, Malik Person, who has number 52. Caden Brown, defensive end, number 11. Um, Aris Bethea, number 80, defensive lineman. Uh, Lyric Samuel, receiver, number seven. So all these guys, plus many others as well, should hopefully put on a show today. Daniel Lamberg, head coach of Erasmus Hall. So good to have you with us. Very good luck for today. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Great to hear from Danny. I'm calling him Danny. I mean, Carl's obviously not quite as good friends with Danny. <laughs> you guys are tight. Calling him Daniel, <laughs> whatever he wants. But, you know, it's great for them to come over here. And, you know, we heard there that they've been uh, looking around London. They've been doing everything they can. You've been on tour quite a lot with the, the GB team and you've been quite successful as well. Yes, it has been incredible. I can't lie. This summer, our women's GB team in flag took home the gold finally at the European Championships. And then only two weeks after, our 17 new girls took home gold, 17 
15 U boys got fourth place and 15 U got eighth. I mean, just the success that is happening right now. And, and recently with the announcement of 2028 Olympics, looking at flag football mm. officially, and it's just all things are uphill right now. And it's a really exciting time to be a part of flag football, but just part of the growth of the American football in this country. Yeah, it's huge. Also, along with cricket for the for the yes. Olympics, which is crazy. One for you, one for me. There oh, we go. perfect. We get one of our favorite well, we'll sports see, each. We, we each get a, well. a medal then. Is that how this works? I have absolutely no <laughs> idea. Uh, we got a guest in just a second. In fact, we can bring him in right now. Let's go for it. I was going to say, Phoebe, uh, you know, these guys getting Please, to go on tour. Welcome. Yo, yo, yo. What's <laughs> good? Destroy. Uh, dis destroying. How is it going? You're on a bit of a tour at the moment. We're just talking sir, about going on yes, tour and how cool that can be. We're across the pond now, man. You know, I'm known for making videos in the States, but we in the UK now getting it in, so I'm excited. Are most of your followers from the States? Is that, is uh, that where you're big at the They're worldwide, man. Of course, mm -hmm. a main majority of them, yeah, but it's worldwide, man. I get messages from everywhere. Spanish countries, European countries, Asian countries, man, it's, it's insane. I can imagine. I mean, I, I know that your following is massive. Now, this is the first time that you will yeah. be here in yeah. London, which is huge. Tell us a bit more about your event on Thursday, because this oh. is, so many people are talking about So we got one-on-ones. Y'all know in America, we go crazy with the ones. Brought them out to London. We're here in Tottenham Stadium. We got some guys competing for 10,000, as they say. Ooh. In the UK, 10 bags, man. 10 <laughs> bags. 10 bags. 10 bands to the best receiver, best DB. Y'all know how it goes, man. It's going to be super exciting. I love that. And, you know, it's been good to see you uh, walking around here, people taking interest in everything. Yeah. You've obviously been here in London for, for more than a day, I'm assuming. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what have you done in London so far? Because we, we find a lot of people do different yeah. things. Some people go all out tourists, and some people, you know, they want to see the real London. They want to see so Tottenham been, High Street. I've been riding the line bikes around a lot. Yep. But I'm not going to lie, the adjustment's been tough. The time difference yeah. is crazy, especially being from the West Coast. So Ooh. it's like a eight hour time difference or something. Yeah. So I spend a lot of days sleeping, I ain't gonna lie. And I wake <laughs> up and adventure at night. I've been trying to catch up with the NFL games too. It's weird because they're at like 1 a.m. over here. Yeah, the whole experience is yeah. so different, isn't it? And again, this weekend you'll be here for the... Yeah, I got to. Got yeah, to, you got, got a little, a few tips for us about this weekend. Who, who, who are you rooting for? Mm, I don't know, man. It was a tough watch for the Ravens this week. I feel like a lot of receivers left their hands at home, but um, I, know. <laughs> I don't know. Titans looking good too. I'm a, I'm a root for the Ravens, but we'll see. You never yeah. know. Any given Sunday, man. You, you can't root against Lamar Jackson. Yeah, I just want to quickly go back to your one-on-one -on -one competition because winners of that are going to go to the 2024 Pro Bowl. Is yep, that correct? Yep. So we're getting like a Pro Bowl champions event where we get all the winners from all the past events and they get to compete for something huge. We got a good budget. Wow. Wow. My big car it might be a lot of money. It might be something. So, you know, <laughs> wow, that's in. And the Pro Bowl, you know, we've been to the yeah. Pro Bowl before. That, that is a really cool place because you get to see some of your favorite players yeah. up close and personal. Yeah. How inspiring is that to, you know, it's to amazing. these players? It's amazing. Of course, a lot of them look, look up to them and they want to be in their position. So the fact that they're going to be there supporting and whatnot, it's going to be huge for them. I think we're going to have a tough game for the NFL Academy here at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium today. How, what kind of game do you think we're going to see? I mean, you may know the teams inside out. You may know them not at all. But from just watching these guys warming up, I, I think you can tell mm. that Erasmus Hall, they, they mean business. Yeah, I heard there's some dogs on Erasmus team. Mm -hmm. um, heard they got a really good receiver. I'm walking over there like, oh, if we was competing your ones, we'd take the money home. So, you know, in, in America, we talk a lot of junk. So I, I'm excited to see what happens today. Love it. Uh, just remind people watching at home where they can follow you on social media hey, and check uh, me see out your progress. On YouTube, at Destroying, D-E-E, two E's, S-T-R-O-Y-I-N-G, Instagram, TikTok, all that. Come check me out and follow, man. All right, Destroying. Thanks for hanging <laughs> with us here Thank in you London. So much. Uh, we're going to see you. actually what happened when the NFL Academy went over to your patch, wow. to the United States of America on their tour now. <laughs> I I feel blessed it. right now, Clive. Oh, I don't, I don't, I can't believe it. It's like a dream. Un unreal, absolutely unreal. Coach Mo, I'm the head football coach right at Buffalo, man. Nice to meet you. you that's group home. six, that's group six. Are you going to do the right thing? Yeah, here we go, group All right, six. Man, I want to offer you a scholarship to Buffalo, man. Yeah! yeah. Over the middle. Uh, I think I can't even explain the words. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I'll speak to you soon. Cheers, guys. Bye bye. Yeah! I just got off from Marshall. Unreal, absolutely unreal. <laughs> First, thank you. Thank you so much. First offer. Wow. I don't know what to say. <laughs> <laughs>
You know what, the guy we saw at the end there, Timmy Oki, now joins us. So you were saying there you're going to eat. What did you eat in the end? <laughs> Offers, you know. I mean, yeah. the guys out there did an amazing job. And I'm hoping today out there, again, you know, we can replicate and get the dub. Now, you are in high demand. Yeah. You've got to say this because, you know, you've gone out there and this is, this is what that tour is all about. It's going out there and, and getting noticed. And, and you've got noticed, right? How many, how many people have you got sniffing around at the moment? I mean, I'm, I'm blessed to be in the situation I'm in right now. Um, loads of different schools. Um, six of offered right now, hopefully some more soon, but you know, um, my decision's coming very soon, um, in the next month or so, so look out for that. Incredible. That must be absolutely incredible to be you know, able to pick. Is there anywhere, I mean, you're not going to answer this, but I'm going to ask you anyway, <laughs> is there any part of the United States that you know, you, you like, you've got an affiliation with, maybe you support the team there, that you maybe would like to end up? Ooh, it's a tough question, I mean, there's loads of good schools, so I can't even shortlist to be honest, but I mean, like I said, I'm blessed to be in this position I am now, and I'll definitely be making my decision very soon. My family, my coaches, my teammates as well, you know, to help me make the right decision for me. That's absolutely incredible. I was going to ask, uh, just for people watching at home there, what, what position are you? And, and had you played any other sports before you came in and got involved that, that helped you sort of transist into that position? Yep, so I was a corner before. Um, I used to play soccer, you know, I call it football, but. That's fine, we can uh, say yeah. soccer. Yeah. Yeah. I call it football. Maybe <laughs> understands us if we say soccer. So, um, We're all good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, was, I used to play football before, um, for the majority of my life, about. 16 years, so a wow. while, um, and track. And then I made the switch over when I joined the academy, which was last year. Um, Coach Marvin gave me the opportunity, you know, to showcase myself. But when I joined, I was just an athlete, you know, no knowledge of the sport. Um, but he, you know, he took me under his arm, taught me the game from scratch, and I'm just thankful a year later, you know, to come out with so much offers and interests. Yeah, that's huge. I mean, so how did you actually find out about the NFL Academy? What made you want to try out for this? Because it's not an easy feat. No, it's not easy mm -hmm. at all. I mean, it's my mum that pushed for it in the first place because playing, you know, soccer before, um, I was kind of stuck on that. I didn't want to do anything else. Uh, my mum told me to try, you know, to try this sport. She thinks it would suit me. Good mum. And at the time, <laughs> I thought, yeah, <laughs> at the time, I thought, no, it wasn't for me. But, you know, I decided, you know, I gave it some thought and I, you know, I took the chance and I'm just happy I did because now I'm here, so... <laughs> That's amazing. Excellent stuff. Well, uh, we look forward to finding out your decision. Thank you uh, very much. Best of luck for the future, and uh, you'll undoubtedly be another success story of the NFL Academy. Of course. Thank you very much. That's one, Timmy. Thank All you right. Very much. Now we're going to hear from Dan, and I will get his name on Dan Akin Kunmi. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I got it right. Here we go. <laughs> Hi, I'm here at the end of the NFL Academy game against IMG. I'm here with Daniel Akin Kunmi. So good to see you, and you'll be playing a winner in this game. How's it feel to beat IMG? It feels amazing. Um, obviously, we played the game last year, didn't come on top, came back with a new mindset, um, with new coaching staff, and we did what we were going to say we were going to do. Um, we played hard, we gave, we gave our all, and we won the game. Now, you've got a big game coming up on Tuesday as well, so a bit a quick turnaround time for you, and then getting into that game. Uh, tell us about your preps that you'll have to go through now. Will it be ice baths and hot showers? <laughs> yeah, so definitely. Um, we have to focus up, lock in today, lock in tonight, um, make sure we get a lot of ice on, because I'm tired as hell right now. Um, but we keep on playing hard, we prepare ourselves, to recover, ice baths, do whatever we can to get recovered and be prepared for Tuesday. Now, you're one of those athletes, went out to uh, the States, got offered a a bunch of offers really I mean uh, uh, a lot of gifts coming your way a lot of love coming your way for just the athlete you are and how you've balled out both here and when you went out to camp and so you got a big decision to make on Thursday and how's it feel tell us about it yeah it's, it's a blessing to have over 35 plus division one scholarships um, I just love the game um, next week first I'll be making my commitment um, in Tottenham Hotspur Stadium um, at the strengths um, one one event ne um, next week um, it's going to be a great experience for me um, to let the world know where I'm going to go to and take my talent to for the next three to four years. Um, I'm just happy I can put Europe on the map and there's obviously going to be more of us in up and coming years. And the scoop is, the university is? University of, you're going to have to find out next week. Ah, uh, he's not going to tell us. All right, Daniel, it was so good to see you. Thanks ever so much. Congratulations on the game tonight. We look forward to your announcement. Just excited for your future. 
Well, thank you very much, Carl, here with Phoebe. We are minutes away now from the start of this game. Phoebe, I just want to talk to you uh, briefly, just NFL Academy obviously doing great things here in the UK. Yeah. Um, you just mentioned to me, just while we were watching that there, NFL Africa doing some great things as well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're, we're looking at five players here on the Academy roster who are actually through OC Manure's NFL Africa program. And it just goes to show, I know earlier we were talking about international, we've got Germans, people from Poland, we've got everybody on the actual roster here. But to see those kids at such a young age being scouted, brought over here, they're getting the full academy experience. And a lot of them, you know, I think the, the succession plan is so important. And you look at how that ties into the international player pathway too, right? They have the opportunity now to play two years in high school and then be able to still be chosen for the international player pathway, which is massive and is just going to show, hey, five so years from now where everybody can get to. I think it's really interesting having watched the game against IMG on Friday, just watching these guys against people who have grown up with football being taught in schools. And it's a really, really exciting thing to watch. Quickly, Phoebe, before we go into live commentary, who's going to win this game? Oh, you know what? This is just going to be a battle in the trenches, and I can't wait to see the whole thing go off today. I want to see both teams be successful. But you know we got to root for our NFL Academy. Excellent stuff. NFL Academy against Erasmus Hall. It's coming up here with your commentator, Carl Walkinshaw, alongside Toshane Boyce. Welcome up to the booth, everyone. So good to have you with us here at Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. My name is Carl Walkinshaw, and I'm joined in the booth for this game by the mighty Tashane Boyce. Hi, Shane. Hi, Carl. How are you doing? Welcome, everyone. Today, we are going to have a great, great game. I hope fans at home, you know, you have drinks, you have popcorn, because this game is going to be a serious game. We're really looking forward to this one, and it's such an amazing place to be here, Tottenham Hotspur uh, Stadium right in North London. You're just 10 minutes down the road, so this is a stadium you walk past all the time. But what, what will it feel like for these kids to come and play in this stadium? I mean, as you said, I live, I live so close. I'm so local to the stadium, you know, and just walking past it every day, you know, when I was younger, one day, you know, potentially being in this stadium, you know, such a great opportunity. So for them to get the opportunity today to play and kind of be a part of this game, it's just, yeah, it's a great opportunity. Like, look, it's, it's amazing. And tell us a bit about yourself to Shane, because uh, you were a part of this team for a very long time and you were one of the superstars of this team. And let's not be humble about it. I mean, you were immense. And, and now you've gone on, you're still with the academy, but you're in a new role. So tell us a little bit about your journey getting there. Yeah, so um, my role right now, I work within the NFL, I've got a full-time role with them, so I work within the community team, so I'm a participa um, participation coordinator, and I also lead up our NFL Academy alumni project, so in terms of that, that basically just means everyone that finishes the academy like myself, I give them the opportunity to still get opportunities like this. We have, I think, 25, 26 alumni that are here today witnessing and watching this game. You know, like a lot of us didn't get this opportunity. So to kind of be here to watch and support on and just kind of see what potentially we, we could have had and, you know, give these guys a bit of encouragement. That's, that's what it's all about. It's about growing the game and using our knowledge and our skills that we learned from this program to push, push the next generation through. And we talked about the fact that you actually could have played in this game if COVID hadn't a hit, right? You would have been Tottenham Hotspur, probably this stadium against Erasmus Hall, but that game never actually took place because of COVID. So this is the first time the NFL Academy are actually going to get a shot at Erasmus Hall and vice versa. Yeah, this is the first time. Like, it's, you know, COVID, COVID is a tough one for all of us, man, you know, but, you know, I'm grateful that these guys get the opportunity to play, you know, in this beautiful stadium, you know, against American opposition. Like, as we know, last week, you know, a couple of days ago, you know, on Friday, uh, um, you know, the Academy versus IMG and, you know, they, they beat them, you know, it wasn't by a close score, it was, you know, pretty, pretty good score that they won by. So, you know, just this opportunity in itself, it just shows how much the game's really, really growing. So I'm just grateful and, you know, being able to know that I was a motivation and, you know, inspiration to some of the younger guys to be able to make this happen and make this possible, you know, I'm grateful, man. So, you know, I wish these guys the best of luck and, you know, can't wait to see a game. And this game has been sandwiched. This is being called the, uh, the fourth international London game really isn't it and you can see on the field I mean you're watching now you can see that the NFL shield is there the end zones are decked out in the NFL Academy logo I mean this feels like the NFL right as you watch Erasmus Hall high school come out onto this field Erasmus Hall in red today they come all the way from Brooklyn here they are the New Yorkers come to show what they can do in Tottenham Hotspur Stadium wow I'm getting goosebumps already to Shane I'm getting goosebumps man I, I, I wish I was in this game look, look at them hitting flips and 
this, this team has some energy, man. This team has some energy. You know, they're here to play. They're excited to be in the UK, you know, so we, we got a game on our hands, you know, but this is what we wanted. We wanted a game. We wanted a team that we could actually really, really play to dominate. So now was here. So, you know, let's see how the academy responds. And what we've been told about this high school team is that they will have a lot of speed. We're expecting a lot of speed from this team and a lot of talent. There's some very uh, excellent alumni players that are playing in the NFL as well that come from this high school. But it's not just about them. Here's your home team for today. There they are, the NFL Academy, just about to run out onto the hallowed turf here at Tottenham Hotspur Stadium in front of a big crowd. Here they are, the NFL Academy. Your boys are back, and here they are. They're back, they're back. I see Daniel Akinkumi leading the front. You know, he got a big day for him on Thursday. You know, he's going to be committing to a university that we don't know. So, you know, we're going to wait and see for that. But he has business that he needs to handle before then. So, you know, let's, he, he has to lead the team. You know, he has to lead the team. He's going to be an alumni soon. So I can't wait to see what they have. Look at them with the NFL Academy flag. Oh, God, this is giving me goosebumps, man. This is giving me goosebumps. I know, it's incredible to be here. And we know that you're watching on the live stream. You'll be tuning in from Brooklyn, New York. You'll be tuning in from the United States. You'll be tuning in from Europe. You'll be tuning in from Africa. There's a real international flavor to this series. And the fact that the NFL Academy have so many different players, as you look at the flips that Erasmus Hall are doing in the end zone, you talked about it, some real athletes here. But, you know, the international team, there's like 16 different, different nationalities on that team, you know, and different languages they have to overcome in order to communicate. But that common language always is football to shame. Always, always. It doesn't matter where you come from. Like in the academy now, there's 13 different countries. You know, when I was around, there was only a couple countries. Germany, some people from Portugal, Spain. But now, like, it's really, really diverse. Like, there's a lot of athletes from different countries all over Europe that are really, you know, seeing that, you know, these guys want to play football. I want to play football. It doesn't matter if I'm not from their, you know, their country or we don't have the same culture. Football is the language that everyone loves and speaks. So, you know, it just breeds that culture that the NFL Academy has. We talk about Erasmus Hall as you see him there. They won the national, cha the, not the national championship, but their local New York uh, championship five times. You know, this is a team that has a lot of power, a lot of skill. And if you're the best in New York, and when I spoke to some of their coaches on the sideline, they were saying, look, it's not just that we win, we win big. Like teams don't score against us and we put up a lot of points. So this is really going to be a challenge for NFL Academy, isn't it? I feel like this is the biggest game the NFL Academy's ever played, to be honest. Like, this is a real big step up to, you know, anything that the Academy in history's played before. So, you know, but this is this is, this is is what we wanted, you know. They wanted to play big opposition, wanted to play big teams. And this is, you know, to show that people from the UK can really play American football. So, you know, I, I can't wait. Like, can we just, can we get started? Like, I can't wait. There are our referees on screen. Thank you to them for coming along and taking care of everything here. And they'll be pleased that they get an opportunity to referee in, a, in Tottenham Hotspur Stadium as we stand for the national anthem.
as the cheers go up at Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. This game sandwiched in between those two big NFL games. You know, we had the Jaguars against the Bills with the Jags getting the win last week. And then we've got the Titans versus the Ravens coming up next week. And here we are on the Tuesday, Tottenham Hotspur. This is the unofficial fourth London game. Incredible. So incredible, Carl, man. Like, the atmosphere here, immense. Like, everyone here is excited. You know, everyone's looking forward to this game. And it's just no one knows what's going to happen. No one knows what's going to happen. No one know, knows what the score is going to be. But that's, that's, that's what's so exciting about it. And that's the beautiful game about football. You know, you never know what might happen. So, yeah, let's, let's see how it unfolds. So here we go, then. About to get started as the captains come onto the field. You can see there Daniel and Troni starting quarterback. Some of these captains, Malik Pearson and Nicholas Merced for Erasmus Hall, shaking hands on that NFL shield. And we can go down to the field and listen to the coin toss. Hi, gentlemen. Welcome to Tottenham Stadium. My name is Tim Offenden. I'm the referee. Tim Lee Wood, who's the umpire. Any points for me to feedback to your team members, we'll be doing that through you. Send your team members to work with back to the officials after we'll do that through you. Penalty for any decision, we'll accept for declining any penalty if you want to come to that decision. Okay? That's a head, that's a tail, that's a tail, that's a head, you're the visiting captain, what's your call? Tails. Tails has been called. Tails is the call. And it is a tail. So you've won the toss, you want to take the ball, which end do you want to kick from? Oh, uh, let's kick over there. So you're kicking in that direction? Yeah. So that's call. Turn around so you're facing the way you're going to be playing in the first. House call. House call. Come on now. Come on now. Rasmus Hall won so the toss. Rasmus Hall. Elected to receive. As you can hear from our referee, Erasmus Hall have won the toss and they take the ball to Shane. Now that shows some confidence, right? A lot of times you'll get teams that will actually win and then they defer to that second half because they want that context of that decision at the beginning of that second half. So obviously showing some real pride in their offense getting out there first. As you said, Kyle, you know, they're, they're confident, you know, they've won five championships back home. So, you know, clearly they, they have experience in playing, they've been in big games and big situations before so you know no doubt that obviously they're going to be coming in here with loads of confidence ready to obviously go and see you know see see what happens in this game but yes yeah, it's, it's going to be an interesting one it's going to be an interesting one so john sal Therese will come out to kick for erasmus hall they're in red if you just joined us the nfl academy in white with blue numbers today and erasmus hall in red as we get ready to get this one underway here at Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. It's going to be Jojo Andrews, number two, back. And Keenan Grant, number 13, back for Erasmus Hall to return the kick. So here we go from Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Ball is in the air. Picked up in the end zone and will be returned. Looking now for a gap and using that speed to get to the edge already. That's a dangerous return right there from Keenan Grant. It was uh, just a one more man to beat and you felt like he would have been in more space. But showing that blistering pace early. We knew they were going to be a fast team. We said it. We knew they were going to be a fast. They're ready. They're ready displaying that speed. Here's a replay on that. You can just see it's a nice pick up in the end zone. But again, showing that confidence, not taking a knee, working his way to his left hand side, and it's Quinn that has to get over there. And Max Bartholomew from German defender needs to drag Jojo Andrews down. First and ten at the Erasmus 42. Quick into the flat, again trying to use that space and again showing that speed. Reception made by Samuel Lyric. So a quick out. And that's a really nice drive starter for Erasmus Hall. Just like a long handoff, isn't it, to Shane? Great, great throw by the QB. Number seven is definitely someone that, that they've said is a, is a key player for their team. So definitely going to be looking at and seeing what he's going to be doing this game. And off this time up to the left hand side, and that will pick up a couple close to the sticks. It's running back Amir Morrow, sophomore player at Erasmus Hall. It's going to be slightly short, so it's going to bring up the third down right 
at midfield. Third and inches then. There is head coach Daniel Langford. Flag down, player down. So again, might have picked up the first down on that, but there is a flag. And it looks like Erasmus Hall may be marching back. I don't know about you, Carl, but the energy in this stadium is immense. Erasmus Hall have some of their fans here, some of their family, you know, they're making a lot of noise. Holding offense number 55, 10-yard penalty from the previous spot, replay third down. Called on the captain, Nicholas Merce at that time, number 55. Junior for Erasmus Hall, and now marching back, it's going to make this third down. Gone from third and inches now to third and 11. Here is the hold, you can see just working on the edge, and he just gets too much of defender Matty Kruger, who had such a great game last time. So here we go, third and 11 then. Another flag before the play starts. Kendu Brown, the quarterback for Erasmus Hall. Doesn't even have a chance to get that one underway. Looks like it was a full start. start. Offense number seven, five yard penalty. Replay third down. So they call it on Lyric Samuel, their star wide receiver. She's just trying to get that, that 11 yards, just too keen off that line of scrimmage. Just too quick, two plays, two penalties. They've gone back. Really pushed him back now to beyond where they actually started the drive. They started the drive at the 42 yard line. Now they're back at their own 35 after 20 yards of back to back penalties. Trips to the top. Now they motion another receiver out into the flat, but they'll go to the other side trying to get a kind of smoke screen going. Keenan Grant tried to make the reception, but incomplete. So, after all that, they get to third third and inches and they can't convert to Shane. That was great pressure by the academy defense. There was three players coming over to the quarterback. Quarterback had to let that go quickly. Wide receiver wasn't, wasn't turned to catch the ball. Incomplete. So, fourth down. Jancel Therez will come on to kick this one away. Punt is flat and drilled, will bounce at the 37 and then take an NFL Academy roll, an Erasmus roll rather, down to the 23. Where Giancomo Troni, the quarterback for the NFL Academy, will come out for his first series under the Tottenham Hotspur lights. I'm excited to see what the NFL Academy offense have in store. From the last game, the IMG, we saw that the running backs are on fire, the wide right receivers are on fire. We know number 87, you know, living up to Peter Clark's numbers was on fire last game. So looking forward to see how the offense does in this first drive. So Gene Como Troni, number 18, ready to go. But movement on the line to start with. And who can blame them if they have a few nerves, right? Legal snap, offense number 71, five yard penalty, replay first down. Penalty called on Oscar Poiser, the centre from England for the NFL Academy. Just needs to settle down, get into his rhythm. Yeah. First and 15. Can imagine this, you know, big stadium, you know, a lot of pressure, American opposition, you know, it happens sometimes. Well, that's a great tackle. Trying to get the ball to pull through up on the right hand side, but the Erasmus Hall defenders collapse that side of the line for a loss of one yard. Just watching the replay here, they try and pull the guard, but it's actually a defensive end. Aris Bethea senior player for Erasmus Hall that comes in to make the tackle. Great play by him. Troni with a screen, trying to get to the sideline. It's a good pick-up. That's a pick-up of seven, and it will 
get them back close to their original line of scrimmage, but they will bring up that long third down to Shane. Ben Lack making a great play there, you know, just pushing, getting the momentum going for the NFL Academy. So third and ten. Twins to the top, twins to the bottom. Paul Brewer to Troni's right-hand side. Dangerous defensive end number 80 at the top of your screen in red. Troni with a great protection. Now he has to go to his left-hand side. He's seen the lane open up and he gets to the sideline. First down, NFL Academy. Great run by Troni. Great run by Troni, doing what he does. No one was open, he had to get the first down. There's the replay, there's the great feet, quick feet of Troni. You can see he's still got that option to pass as we get back to the live action now, and it's a run with Brewer up the middle. Brewer picks up three, three and a half. Now let's give him four. Second and six. The opening drive of the NFL Academy converted on third down with the running of Troni. Troni back to pass, and that's batted down. You could see that coming. They were trying to set up the screen, weren't they? But so fast off that defensive line. It was uh, Tyler Izian, the linebacker, that comes in to bat this down to Shane. Here's the replay. Yeah, their defense is so fast. Straight off the line as soon as the ball was snapped, they were there. So, third and seven. Troni has to convert a long one again. Drops back, immediate pressure, has to get rid of it. And there's a flag on that. Was trying to get the ball to Sebastian Harris. Looked like good one-to-one -one coverage. But they're going to call a defensive back on that with a hold or a PI. Defensive back there is Marquise Lawton. He was playing back there. Pass interference, defense number three, 15 yard penalty from the previous spot, automatic first down. And you could just see the hold in the shirt there, couldn't you, to Shane? You can see that referee's call absolutely correct. Sebastian Harris is a handful, isn't he, when you're trying to get over the top? He is a problem. He's a problem. Not many, not many DBs are going to be, you know, getting set down when, he, when, he, when he's up there with the ball. So, you know, sometimes it does, it does get a PI call that happens. Hand off up the middle, Brewer bouncing to his right-hand side. And he'll pick up positive yards again, gain of four. Not Brewer that time, the runner was just exceeding. They have this good one-two punch, don't they, NFL Academy? They have Brewer coming in and Seelig coming in. Seelig that time on the call. It's great to see Seelig back and healthy. I know that he had a little injury before, so good to see him, you know, in the games, dominating, doing what he does. Play action to Seelig. Drill to Sebastian Harris. Did he hold on? They say no, ball came out. So, that defender tested again, Marquis Lawton. This time, he makes a nice play on Harris and knocks the ball out. Looks like we're going to have a little bit of rivalry between number 10 and number 3 right here. Already got a little bit of uh, matchups coming on already. Just playing man to man, trusting their athletes on this one. Troni just has to throw to the turf. Nothing there. That was third and seven. So on come the punt unit. And we'll see for the first time tonight with his punting duties, the young Irishman, Andy Quinn, who did a great job against IMG. He'll come on to punt, converted from rugby. From Donegal in Ireland. No, no, he's going in with the punt. Try and angle it to the coffin. It's going to bounce and be inside the 20. Maybe just bounced outside the 20. We'll see where the referee Marty is going to come to rest at the 22. So, about a 35-yard kick. What did you make of NFL Academy's first series? 
I think, yeah, I think you can definitely see that, you know, the American opposition, you know, we've, we, we know they're fast. We know that they've been fast in comparison to other teams. That's what the Americans have, you know, they have that speed. So obviously when, you know, you kind of get into it, that adjustment of, oh, like that, that defensive end is really coming down. That's when obviously you have to release the ball a lot quicker. So I think once Jack gets on his feet and obviously he understands, you know, like this is the pace and, you know, the, the speed that they're going to be coming at, I think once they get a little bit more comfortable, then things can start to progress. Back to work for Kendu Brown. Erasmus Hall starting on their 22 with a run to the right-hand side and still moving those legs. That was tough running from Amir Morrow, who picks up a long six. Here's the replay. Just great blocking, but look at the way he just keeps his legs going there. Takes three defenders to bring him down, does Morrow. Strong as well as fast on that run. Hand off again tomorrow. Gets hit in the backfield and then hit again by two other defenders coming in. That's really strong defense from the NFL Academy. Flag on the field. Referees want to talk about this one. Holding, offense number 58, 10 yard penalty from the previous spot, replay second there. Strange where that flag was thrown, wasn't it? Because it was kind of thrown by the side judge rather than the, the back judge. Just having a look there to try and see if we can see the hold. I think it may have been off camera. Well defended by NFL Academy anyway. Second and 15 now. And these penalties killing Erasmus Hall early on to shame. Yeah, penalties sometimes, you know, that's what slows down the momentum and ruins games. Play action, watch out. They had a man in the middle of the field, streaking down the field. It was Keenan Grant, he'd beaten his defender. But Jojo just couldn't get the ball to him. Great defense by Arthur, he was there. He was there just in case anything went deep, he was there. To Kendu Brown, his arm sort of let him down because the receiver had got behind the two defenders. But um, Kendu Brown couldn't get the ball to him. So third and 15 upcoming. What are you thinking so far, Carl, about Erasmus' offense? What do you think? Dangerous, and they look fast as build. As we come to this critical third down, they are sending receivers deep with a throw it across the middle. And just Samuel Lyric, sorry, Lyric Samuel trying to catch that one. And you feel like just a few accuracy problems for Kendu Brown. Here's the replay to Shane. Personal foul, dropping the passer. Defense number 99, 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Well, you heard that. That is a massive penalty for the NFL Academy to give up at that spot. They had him off the field, and then in comes the rough in the passer call. Here's a replay of that rough in the passer. And you can see it, the late hit goes in there. I think it was on Luke Yay Gale. We just spoke about it, Carl. We just said penalties sometimes can, you know, damage the game, ruin the momentum sometimes. This is a big game. Big game for Erasmus Hall right here. Yeah, she said, yeah the penalty was on Luke Yay Gale. As uh, Erasmus Hall obviously with a fresh set of downs. Now power up the middle on first down for a gain of nine. Desmond Allen coming in on the run. New running back into the backfield and some fresh legs. Second down. Flag. Legal snap. Offense number 77. Five yard penalty. Replay second down. More penalties, Cal. More penalties. It's been a game of penalties so far. Yeah, and you saw Danny Landberg on the sideline kind of shaking his head. He can't quite believe the amount of penalties that Erasmus are racking up in this first quarter. Second and six. Play action, they'll get it to the flat. And again, a little bit of inaccuracy from the quarterback. I feel like those plays 
would, would get some big yards if he could just complete on that one. He was trying to get to his tight end, Jalen Balu. No dice. It's quite a close game so far. You don't know who's going to score the first touchdown. You know, could be Erasmus, could be Academy. It's quite, it's quite even right now. A lot of penalties, but either side, you know. But when they get into it, when they get a little bit calmer. No score here yet in Q1. Erasmus Hall now with a third and six. They will hand this one. You can hear the blows going in on that field. Met picked up two but going to be short of what they needed. Now, it is fourth down. My eyes do not deceive me because the offense is staying on the field to Shane. Looks like they're going for it, Carl. Let's see what happens. Oh, Go. another penalty. Movement that time on Devin Kinsey. So that'll go back five yards and, wow. Head coach. Offense number 58, five yard penalty. Replay fourth down. Head coach Danny Lamberg. We'll see the replay of the false start there. His left tackle goes. Devin Kinsey, clear violator on that foul. Do you think they would have gone for it on fourth and five from their own sort of 37? Do you think they're just trying to get the other team offside? And then, but they pulled themselves offside. Yeah, I think they, they probably tried to go for a little ice call there just to freeze them, but you know, they, they were the ones that moved. Oh, the punt goes straight up in the air. Goes all of about seven yards, then takes an Erasmus roll. Now, Erasmus is saying pick up the ball for obvious reasons, they don't want to return. But a bit of a disastrous kick there from Jansil Therese. It's going to give NFL Academy the ball into Erasmus Hall territory already. This is great position for, N for the NFL Academy. Look at this replay right here. Let's see if we can see what happened. Doesn't look like the ball's not blocked, doesn't look like. Just, just the wrong angle of the leg on the kick, and uh, that's one he's going to want to have back. Let's see how the NFL Academy come back. This is great field positioning. What can they do so close to the end zone? Let's see. NFL Academy ready to go, just waiting for Erasmus Hall defense to get on the field. Slow with some of their personnel arrangements. Whistle goes. Players live. Troni then hands off to Brewer with some a ceiling actually with some what looked like an initially good block, but they rally so quickly to the ball to shame. They're fast, cow. They're fast boys. They are fast. That's the transition, you know, within Europe. You know, these American guys they're really, really fast, so they get to the ball so quickly. Nose tackle there. First time he called his name, Malik Pearson. One to watch, number 52. Just driving Selig back. High snap, Selig on oh. his play action over the top, trying to get a completion and caught by Winter. What a great catch, climbing the ladder. Winter with a spectacular catch, going to take them all the way down to the six yard line. Woo. Great catch by Brian Winter. He did something so similar last game, you know, where he kind of came in clutch and scored that touchdown for the NFL Academy. Great recruitment for the NFL Academy, Brown Winter. Desmond Allen was the man in coverage, but Winter just elevated to get the ball out of the air. Inside the 10 yard line at the nine now, first and goal, NFL Academy. Still in Q1, knocking on the door. Ah. Just slipped on this turf, did Selig. Went down and had a look at the turf, obviously, you know, people will have seen the incredible pictures of the turf, you know, the, the, the Tottenham Hotspur grass folding away and then going under that south stand and then the NFL Academy turf being laid over the top. It's incredible the way they do it, but uh, not a friend of Selig on that one. Second and goal, look for the slant and batted in the air that time. Ellis Johnson, the defensive back, junior player, just got his hand in the throwing lane there. Yeah, that was good defense over there, good defense. Erasmus Hall know where they are. It's a replay again on that. It's just trying to get the slant to Harris. And a great back down. There is Sebastian Harris, scored two touchdowns last time he's outing against IMG. 
Troni, with backside pressure, feels it. Scrambles to pick up a yard. Pressure was coming from Christopher Smith from his defensive line position, senior player. Fourth from goal, looks like they're going to punt this one. Yep, looks like the decision will be to go for the kick, see whether they can put three on the board as Andy Quinn comes on again. It will be Troni that's holding for him. Flag. Now, who moved? Full start. Oh, they're pointing at Erasmus Hall by the looks of things. Let's see. Disconcerting signals made by number five for the defence. Five yard penalty. Remains fourth down. So Ian Willey, actually be Christian Moore, the linebacker, gets called for disconcerting signals being called. I guess he's trying to distract the kicker, but that's a massive mistake because it looks like NFL Academy, obviously they don't get a first down automatically, so it's still fourth down, but now they're on the five yard line after that. And they've put their offense out there. Kicker comes off the field, they will go for it. Troni working to his left hand side and just out just couldn't get the ball up to his tight end that time. He tried to hit Dominic, uh, ball was just a little bit low, unlucky. So the Dutchman hold, here's the replay, play action, pressure coming up the middle and rushed pass. And just couldn't get the ball to Dominic Tietz and Dominic Tietz scored those two touchdowns last time out for Academy international you know come from germany you know he has a hot hand so Troni's definitely looking to use him again this game so a bizarre sequence of events really because nfl academy initially were looking like they were going to go for the kick then they have that strange penalty which you don't hear called very often distracting signals by a defender they go for the touchdown they miss it but erasmus hall now backed up on their five yard line for this series No score yet as Erasmus Hall start this with a run off the left hand side. Amir Morrow again on the run. He's looking very handy, isn't he? Especially on those first down, second down, just trying to make those chains manageable. They're moving the chains slowly, you know, they're not at the back of their end zone anymore, so let's see how the offense goes. It's been a, it's been a close game. Second and three, handoff slips on the turf again, does Morrow. Seen a couple of times running back slipping on this NFL turf. That was good defending that time, though, a loss of a yard. Third and four for Erasmus Hall. Still backed up under their posts, so they have to be slightly careful. They don't want to make a mistake here. But equally, they want to convert, get the ball moving. Drop, again, just that little bit of inaccuracy. We've seen it two or three times, haven't we? It's been a little bit low, low balls, you know, you've got to give your receivers an opportunity to, get, to catch the ball, that's, that's their job. They've got to catch the ball, but if the balls are low, there's nothing they can do. Yeah, you're right, you'll see it on the replay here. Kendu Brown just drops back and he's got his man, his man is open. Just under throws him. Ball hits the dirt. Kyle, you can hear the frustration down there by the Rasmus team, you know, they, they, they're getting frustrated, you know, the discipline, they know it needs to be a little bit more there, but, you know, let's see how they do. Do you think jet lag is impacting it? You, you know, they're only four days in the UK, or maybe the timing's just off. I mean, it's hard to know, isn't it? It's hard to know, but hey, They've been, they've, they're used to this, they should be used to this. So punting from his own one yard line. This one's a better kick than last time out and it will be fielded by Lax at the 42 and Lax will be dropped right there. Decent coverage by Erasmus, but still NFL Academy 
will start the drive in the Erasmus half. Kyle, it's just that speed that we were talking about earlier, you know, it's just as soon as they see someone catch the ball, as soon as they know where the person's going to be, they're just there in an instant. Certainly shown speed on defence and offence. You feel it's just the mechanics of the quarterback at the moment getting the ball to those receivers to really set them loose. So, two minutes left of this Q1 still. Flags go in. Legal snap. Offence number 71. Five-yard penalty. Remains first down. Oscar Poiser again with another illegal snap. We'll have to keep an eye on that, see if we can work out what he's doing, whether he's picking that ball up, you know, double pumping it between your legs or whatever it is, it's causing a problem for NFL Academy on these snaps. Oh. Troni, on second and 15, just has to get rid of that one out of bounds. Trying to get to Harris. And that was first down after the penalty, so it's going to bring up second and 15 now. Defense are really getting fired up. The pressure's getting more intense. That's a good completion that time to Tietz, and he's in space. Matroni with a three-step drop and just drilled it to Tietz. He's a big target, isn't he, Tietz? He's tall and strong. He's six foot four. He is a big target. You know, last game he really showed what he could do. So only right that Troni's going back to him, you know, give him opportunities to get down, get yards, and you know, get some good film. And that's managing to bring up a manageable third and three now as they go empty set. Five receivers, five targets for Troni. He looks to his left and he tries to get it to Tietz again, but Tietz was open and just missed it to Shane. Just missed it. But hey, Erasmus Hall came through with a lot of pressure. So, you know, Troni just had to get let that ball go and, you know, unfortunate. But, yeah. Here's the replay, you can see the pressure there. But as the ball leaves his hand, it just feels like it's stuck to his fingers a little bit. Trajectory all wrong. But NFL Academy stay on the field. This now is fourth and three for NFL. They go with the same set, five receivers, and they'll go to exactly the same play. And this time, Troni says, you won't catch me out again. And he gets the ball to Tietz, first down. Really nice play. Great play. Dominic just bodies the player, bodies number four down to the ground, showing some aggression. They're just playing a zone on that one, weren't they? The Erasmus Hall and Tietz takes five steps, turns around, and there's the ball. Nice delivery, good first down. Academy getting something moving again. <laughs> Quick pass to Sebastian Harris. Haven't really been passing on first down, have they? This time they go to the slant, and Harris catches it underneath. Good accuracy again by Troni. He's thrown well the last two downs. Seems now Troni's getting a little bit more comfortable now with the offense, moving the chain slowly. This one's a handoff. That'll go nowhere. It's that big defensive end again. Harris Pathea, senior defensive lineman. He's had a couple of devastating plays in the NFL Academy backfield. Takes him back for a three-yard loss, going to bring up third and four. So as we end... Time's expired in the first quarter. We come to the end of Q1. To Shane, nil-nil, but lots of action, and it feels like most of the action's actually taken place in the Erasmus Hall half. It's just, yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot of penalties, a lot of flags being called, you know, mainly on Erasmus Hall. You know, if they start to, you know, become a little bit more disciplined, the game could be a little bit different. But, you know, good drive by the NFL Academy. And, yeah, they're, they're moving the chain slowly. What what a first quarter. What a first quarter so far. What, what are your thoughts, Carl? Yeah, welcome up to the booth, everyone. It's good to see you here at Tottenham Hotspur. We really enjoyed that Q1. But you do feel like 
the penalties really hurting Erasmus Hall. Definitely. I thought, you know, especially their experience, they would have been a little bit more disciplined, you know, but clearly, you know, there's certain things that are not going right so far in that team. So hopefully they, they start to pick it up a little bit more and, you know, it's a less, you know, penalty game and the game can actually start flowing a little bit better. Just looking at those two quarterbacks, you know, you feel like the Erasmus Hall quarterback, you just feel like the Erasmus Hall quarterback is just missing some of his throws and Troni was as well. But just as that Q1 came to an end, you felt like Troni was beginning to find his rhythm. Yeah, so look, and, and, and that's the thing with Troni, you know, once he gets it, once he, you know, gets a little bit comfortable and obviously his, he starts putting a little bit more faith in his wide receivers, that's when obviously he can start to, you know, throw, you know, throw, throw, throw the ball a little bit more, you know, uh, running backs can start to run the rock a little bit more and, you know, the offense starts to progress. We've seen the speed of Erasmus Hall, but we've not seen a big broken play yet. So certainly NFL Academy defense in that Q1 have been equal to Erasmus Hall's offense as we get Q2 underway. Third down, wide open in the end zone, it's a touchdown. As soon as we say it, Cal. It's Brian Winter again. Great touchdown by Brian Winter. Scored twice last week, last time, but there is a flag down. Well, there's a player down in the end zone. That's what Steve Hagen was pointing out. That's a touchdown. As soon as we said it, Carl, as soon as we said it. So Jashir Harris has gone down in the end zone. You'll see him there, and, and Steve Hagen, all credit to him. He's the, you know, the NFL Academy head coach but concerned about that player down in the end zone but the touchdown it looks like will stand so the first play of q2 brian winter strikes again again and yeah it just shows the the level of football over there with these international players that they have that like, you know they're, they're coming with you know the opportunity and they, they want to play football and you know what a great touchdown by brian winter continuing to show you know why he's a great player and a great asset to this nfl academy team so it's good to see that Jasir Harris, uh, the sophomore defensive back for Erasmus Hall, limping back to the sideline, but manages to get there under his own steam. NFL Academy on the board with that six-pointer to Winter. And we're going to go for one. One comes Quinn for the kick. It's up and it's good. So the NFL Academy take an early lead right on the first play of q2 seven to the nfl academy rasmus hall yet to score here's the replay on the touchdown to shane brown winter just always finds himself open he just always finds space i know he found space in the end zone caught the ball easy seven Just talking about Troni's arm, we said towards the end of that Q1, he was really getting to the point where there's more accuracy on that. And it showed on that touchdown play. Brian Winter with two scores against IMG Academy, comes in and opens his account here in the NFL Academy's account. As these floodlights at full power now here in Tottenham Hotspur Stadium and just you know, sometimes I just look up from the pitch and just go, wow, we're in Tottenham Hotspur Stadium commentating. Like Incredible we, stuff. Like Still pinching really myself. It feel, it's, it's a Tuesday evening, but it really feels like Friday Night Lights right now. You know, the guys must be loving this right now. What an amazing experience. And the NFL Academy are up seven to nothing. Now Erasmus Hall will need to get their offense going as the kick returns will be picked up at the 10 yard line. And again, look at the speed of that runner. Oh. He's gonna break it to the left hand side, still going and they have to usher him out of bounds. Keenan Grant, senior with Erasmus Hall and just when they needed the big speed, he turns on the Jets, here it is. That's how you get a team motivated, you know, they just they just went down by a score, you know, and that's that's a play that you need to kind of get a team going. So well done to him. Well done to him. Let's see what they do on offense now. Well done to the kicker. Andy Quinn, you see their number five having to track Keenan out of bounds. Very nearly a score of their own. He says the Erasmus Hall supporters come all this way from Brooklyn, New York. Come with a lot of intensity. Have these Dutchmen. And for the 
first time really in this game. They're now going to start a drive within the NFL Academy half. Muff snap, flag goes down, ball is still loose. Looks like Amir Morrow will have recovered that fumble, but only just, and he had a bunch of NFL Academy players bearing down on him. Head coach coming onto the field and wants to take a look at his player, this Daniel Landberg. So obviously an injury timeout here, but we'll also hear from referee in terms of that flag that went down. Legal formation, five men in the backfield, can see offence, that penalty is declined, as all the play brings up, second down. So anything that could go wrong went wrong on that play for Erasmus Hall. They get a flag, they get a muff snap, and they're running back in trying to save the ball from being turned over by the academy. Gets hurt on this play, just gets squeezed under all those bodies coming in trying to rip the ball loose, doesn't he? That's number six as well, you know, he's a crucial player for that Erasmus Hall offence, so hope he's going to be all right. Just, just seems, Carl, like one step forward, two steps back for Erasmus Hall at the moment. Yeah, and you feel like they've, they've got potential. They're showing that they've got huge potential in terms of the speed and the running backs that they've got and the weapons that they've got on offence, but just that one kick return for them so far that's put them in the NFL Academy half, as we will take a little bit of time just to look at this touchdown. Here's the opening touchdown to Shane again from Troni to Brian Winter. And wide open under the post there, wasn't he, Winter? I don't know, it just looked like it was a busted coverage. You know, he was just so wide open, you know, easy, easy, you know, touchdown for him. Just adding to his touchdowns. Credit to the NFL Academy offense for the way they've come out. They had a couple of busted coverages from, from IMG last time they played. As you see, head of the IMG Academy, Lamar Winston there looking on. And he'll be, you know, he'll be happy that that player for Erasmus Hall and Mia Morrow is now on his feet and made his way back to the sideline so we can restart play here. It's time Erasmus Hall come out with running backs to either side. But Erasmus Hall call a timeout. Timeout by Erasmus. Their first at 11.35. First time out of the game, Carl. Wonder what they're going to be doing. Yeah, 11.35 left in this half, so plenty of time on the clock. 7 nothing down. What do you think they'll be talking about in that huddle to Shane? I think they're just going to be talking about, you know, more discipline. Obviously, they lost the player now, so, you know, he was, you know, a pivotal point of their offense. So, you know, they're going to have to switch things up. You know, some of those other guys are going to need to step up and do a little bit more. They, may, they might start looking to throw the ball a little bit more, knowing that, you know, one of their crucial running backs has gone down. So, you know, there's a lot of things that, you know, they're, they're going to be talking about and just make sure that they, they play the game the way that they know that they can play. Spoke to their speed coach, Coach Sean Benson on the sideline earlier and he was telling me that um, he was telling me that uh, they'd spend a lot of time working on speed here as you see Loughborough University staff down here as well that great connection between NFL Academy and Loughborough the home of the NFL Academy now as the ball gets out it's knocked out and now it looks like it's going to be a turnover for NFL Academy that was Deshaun Barmakins on the run, and they just had a mess on the on the exchange. So they lose their starting running back. Makins comes in, immediate fumble. This is what we're talking about, Carl. You know, simple mistakes like that is what can change the game. You know, you literally just said they had a timeout, they had time, and you know, clearly ball popped out. You know, Academy are going to recover. Masash Arthur, the linebacker, Italian and English dual nationality and he's a heck of a player he was wearing number 52 last year and changed into shirt number two but he makes plays all over the field he was the man there to to pick the ball up so the academy get the ball back again with a seven nothing lead at their own 45 yard line they'll give this one 
to Winter trying to turn the edge on an end around, showing some quick feet. Pick up of eight yards. So Winter showing he can find the edge with pace. Brian Winter, I know that this isn't going to be the first time we call his name today. You know, he's dominating. He's dominating right now. Second and two. Troni with the handoff. Brewer barrels his way for a first down. Chains move again into Erasmus Hall territory. Brewer, such a dependable runner when you need him. So dependable, man. I remember before I finished, you know, me and Brewer had some good conversations, and I love seeing what he's doing and the way that he stepped up as a leader for the running backs. There he is, the German Brewer. Been with NFL Academy. It's his second season now. Play action. Oh. Sebastian Harris is open and Troni overthrew him. That could have been massive. Seb Harris had split those safeties and again it looked like confusion amongst those defensive backs. Here's the replay to Shane. Little twitch of the shoulder. Harris open on gone begging. Seb was open, he was ready. I know Troni's going to be angry about that one. Second and ten. So they throw again on first down, incomplete. But it's only second down. And movement on the line. Flags go in. Look like Askham El Nagmi. Offensive start, line. Offense number 72, five yard penalty, replay second down. So Almagny gets called, second and 15. <laughs> Empty set again for Troni. Now that took a long time to develop. What do you think, delay of game? Yeah, probably a Legal delay snap. of game. Oh, snap again. Five-yard penalty, replay second down. Yeah, again, Poiser with the illegal snap. Now, if I'm the coaching staff of NFL Academy, I want him to go to the referee and ask him what is going on. You know, what is it you're calling? What are you seeing? Yeah, because that, that wasn't an issue last game. You know, that's, that's 10 yards in two plays that have just been gone just based on penalties. We'll see if we can get a replay of that. Looking at the ball there. Snap this time is high. Troni does really well to field it and get it to Seb Harris for a gain of about seven. So the quick thinking of Troni getting the academy out of trouble. Here's the illegal snap. Let's just have a look at that ball. Ah, there you go. So that's what the referee's seeing. Just that little twitch, that double pump. Great work from our production crew to get us a look at what the referees are seeing. Yeah, Oscar just needs to be a little bit more poised, take his time, you know, don't rush. Third and 13, loads of time. Ooh. The double coverage downfield and the academy want a flag. And there is one. That looks like that was P.I. definitely on Ben Lax. I saw a little, a little push. Double coverage there. Troni had all the time in the world. Defense number 24, 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. They call it on Jelani Hercules. Yeah. I think they mean to call it actually on Ellis Johnson looking at that because it's Johnson that makes the contact and just shoves Ben Lax to the ground. Nevertheless, it is... A PI penalty, first down for the academy. They keep the sticks moving to Shane. Keep moving, you know. It's all about the, the academy team's very disciplined. You know, they haven't been getting many PI calls, and you know their offense are very dangerous when they get in these close situations. Troni, another high snap, moves to his right. Now just has to get rid of it. Those snaps, boys are having trouble, and uh, it's putting Troni under all sorts of pressure. 
Yeah, Troni's, you know, he's consistently every snap having to try catch up with one hand, and if he doesn't, he's turning around, and the snaps just need to be a little bit better to give him a, little, a lot bit more time. What does that do as a quarterback if you're not having clean snaps? It just messes up your time, just, you know, makes you mess up your shift patterns in terms of you rolling There's out no and it just doesn't give you enough time. And looking downfield in the pass, as the pass illegally grounded, the ball beyond the line of scrimmage, second down. So they waved off the flag for illegally downing the ball beyond the line of scrimmage, so that there is no flag. There's coach Steve Hagen on the sideline. And there's his counterpart, Daniel Langfield, who's angry about something. I guess he's still angry about that pass interference call. Come on, Cal, we clearly saw that that was PI. That was definitely, oh, pressure. Troni does a great job to get that ball away. Has to take a big hit on the edge. Throws into the blitz fearlessly. He gets the ball to Seb Harris. And it's going to move the sticks again. What a play by Troni, just standing in there and delivering it. Here's the replay. Yeah, you see the hit going in there from the defensive end. Great catch and control by Seb. Troni really using his wide receivers now in this drive. First and ten at the Erasmus Hall 12 yard line. Sorry, 17 yard line. This one handed off to Brewer. Sorry, to Selig. Picks up a couple. NFL Academy looking for their second score here under the lights at Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. This is very historic, Carmen. You know, this has never been done before. Never been done. So, you know, just watching it in the moment, seeing it all happen and unfolding, you know, it's, it just shows how much the game's really, really growing. Great to see all these people here at Tottenham Hotspur Stadium as well as Troni now on second and eight gets the ball at the top. That's well defended this time. Trying to get the ball to Winter on a similar play as the touchdown pass, but really good defence from uh, Ellis Johnson. Third and eight. Looks like the NFL Academy put CD in. Let's see what's going to happen here. Pressure coming from Troni, he rolls to his left, now he's under more pressure, just has to get to the end zone, he's far, oh, finds him out, what a catch! Winter for his second score! Brian Winter, touchdown in the Academy. What a play from Troni, throwing off his back foot under all sorts of pressure, and Winter runs under the ball. You'll see here on the replay, Troni telling Winter where he wants him to go, and Winter says, OK, bobbles it, gets his feet in, catch. Spectacular play from the NFL Academy here at Tottenham Hotspur. Carl, what are we witnessing right here? What are we witnessing? This is just great football. Great, great play calling by Troni, you know, telling him to get to where he needs to be. So after that, Quinn comes in to convert on the kick and it's 14 to the NFL Academy and zero to Erasmus High Erasmus Hall rather high school two touchdowns from Brian Winter coming at the big in this Q2 no score in that first quarter here's the touchdown again so you'll see Troni directing traffic. He knows exactly where he wants to go, and he's under all sorts of pressure from that big defensive lineman, Malik Pearson. And look at the back end of that play. Winter just with the concentration and focus he needed right at the back of the end zone to make that catch. How Great. difficult to make that catch to Shane right there? So difficult, you know, especially, you know, him being on the run, running so fast, you know, he bobbled it. Could have dropped it, you know, but just that control to really just bring it in and just to secure that catch and have, you know, both feet in as well. Great athlete, great big, catch. Big cheer went up as uh, the crowd here watching that on the replay and they can see that Winter did get get inbounds and made that catch. And even just mentioning Troni, that, 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 that defensive player was so close to his face and 
just managed to get the ball off. So here comes a kick return. They've been dangerous on this kick return, but not this time. The NFL Academy will stop the return at the Erasmus Hall 27. 8.36 left in this Q2. And this game has really gone the way that the game against IMG went with, you know, it was Tietz actually had two scores on the board. This time it's Winter with two scores on the board. But they're 14-0 up in a heartbeat. I don't, I don't know what to say, Carl. You know, it's just, it's great football. You know, this is, this is what they've been wanting for ages and they're really showing, you know, why, you know, they wanted to play this American opposition, you know, because they're ready, they can play. So Erasmus, Hall. This time they'll go a screen on first down. And they'll pick up decent yardage. Reception made by Marquise Lawton. For a gain of seven, it's going to bring up second and three. That's what you want to do if you're a fast team, isn't it? Use the flats as much as you can to Shane. Literally just use the flats because everyone always thinks that they're trying to go for the long ball. If you do the short ones, go to the flats, get open, it works. Yeah. Still got Desmond Allen in as running back. Doesn't look like Amir Morrow's going to return after that injury, certainly not in this first half. Handoff. What a great play on the edge. That's Arthur, again, the linebacker, we've called his name a couple of times already. Sash Arthur, he was relatively quiet last time against IMG, wasn't he? But he's really made a couple of key plays on the edge here. Here's the replay to Shane. Arthur's just so fast, man. He's so fast, he just always gets to where he needs to be in time. And off again to Deshane. Deshaun Barr-Makins. And the NFL Academy stuff it at the line of scrimmage. No gain. You can see the frustration down there by the Rasmus Hall side. You know, they, they're getting angry. They're getting frustrated. Yeah, Longfield just screaming the signals in, isn't he? Trying to get this team going. If you need energy, we'll certainly give you that. Team's still out there. They're in their own half on fourth down. Rolling the dice in this Q2, Erasmus Hall, to try and stay with the NFL Academy. They will hand it off. And trying to cut back inside it. I don't think he's got it to Shane. I don't no. think he's got it. Not at all, not at all. NFL Academy defense made a stop. The defense are just on fire right now for the NFL Academy. His last two plays and third down, they stuff him at the line of scrimmage. And fourth down. Substitution infraction, 12 men on defense. It's a five yard penalty, results in a first down. Wow, what a let off for Erasmus Hall. They stuffed the play, but the flag went in for a substitution infraction, and it's going to give Erasmus Hall a first down. Cal, we were speaking about you know these mistakes. Here's the play, you're right to Shane, the mistakes. I mean, didn't make a mistake on this one. Look at those white jerseys piling in. But it was all for naught in the end, because the Erasmus Hall will get given a first down. Still inside their own territory at the 42-yard line. NFL Academy just needs to keep doing what they're doing. Clearly, you know, they've, they've, so, they've shown that they can make a stop. You know, Erasmus Hall hasn't been able to do much. They just need, need to do the same thing, keep that same energy on defense. First down, looking to go deep, has a receiver, missed! And a flag will go in. Two flags now fly in. That was a, a pass that could have been caught by Keenan Grant, but he was tripped by the defender. Would you say that that's a professional foul? You know, you can see the receiver going in, you just chip his Pass legs, knock him down. I don't know, Kat, it didn't, it didn't look, it didn't look on purpose to me. Ball. It looked like, you know, Automatic it was an accident, the little foot came in and... Yeah, that's, that's a tough penalty, 15. Here's the replay. You can see there's the tug and there's the trip. And the penalty's on Brandon Bryant, Trinidad and Tobago defensive back. Again, a clear PI. You feel like 
if Brandon hadn't done that, Grant Keenan would have been gone for the touchdown. And of course, in this format of the game, it's not a spot foul, is it? It's a 15-yard penalty. Yep, 15 yards is a lot of yards, Cal. A lot of yards to move up the field. You can see Daniel, head coach of Erasmus Hall, not happy with that at all. But it does mean that Erasmus Hall get a fresh set of downs into NFL territory now. Brown goes deep, and it's almost intercepted. Had his hands on it. Same man again. They keep trying to pick on him, Brandon Bryan. And this time he was equal to it and nearly got the pick. So close, so close. Just has his hands on it. Ah, ball just comes out. Great effort by Brandon, though. Six foot, 160 pounds, and needed every inch of that six foot to try and make the reception on that. Really good position from him in between quarterback and the receiver, making the quarterback throw it over his head. Big shout out to these children on the NFL Academy sideline, giving the NFL Academy some juice. Delay against the offense, five yard penalty. We play second down. They can't seem to get any consistency going, Erasmus. Can't, can't. It just seems like there's just so many penalties going on on either side. Delay a game. Takes a second and 10 after that incompletion, back to a second and 15. This time they try some razzle-dazzle as they try to reverse and get on the edge, and what great pursuit! Well, we talked about Erasmus's speed coming in here, but that was just a fantastic edge play by the NFL Academy. Henry Laos coming in with the great speed. Here it is, they set up the little reverse play, Laos, as you say, what a play by him. Threw him straight out of bounds. 215 pounds, Henry Laos, six foot one. But he's got wheels. It's all that training at Loughborough, you know, the... It's all that running coach makes him do. All that sprint training, all those early moments, morning sessions, you know, it's paying. So a loss of two on that, and Erasmus Hall will go empty set. Five targets now for Brown. Blay blown dead again. Another flag thrown on play. <laughs> Looks like Erasmus Hall are going to be marched back again. Oh, and this time it's going to be third in a New York taxi ride to get back to the sticks to shame. They, they, you know, they, they got a PI call, gave them 15 yards, and you know they've just gone all the way back. Third and 25 for the young men from Brooklyn is the challenge on this down. Start, offense number 23, five-yard penalty, replay third down. So two false start penalties plus the tackle for a loss on the end around. Brown with a long way to go as pressure comes immediately and the ball is dropped. Just had to hurry that one, just trying to get the ball to his uh, receiver, Grant Keenan. Fourth down again for Erasmus Hall. Tough game, Carl, tough game, you know. NFL Academy are dominating right now and, you know, Rasmus Hall is still, still trying to find their feet, you know, a lot of penalties being called so far, you know, they're just not disciplined at the moment. You feel like we've not seen the best of them, don't you? You feel like there's so much, if they can just get clicking, they could really light stadiums up and you know that's what they do. But like you say, they just haven't found that rhythm. They're just not clicking right now, Rasmus Hall. Fourth. 25, punter will come out again. But again, another flag. Four start, offense number 33, five yard penalty, replay fourth down. And another false start. Erasmus Hall 
get pushed back another five yards. Head coach definitely isn't going to be happy with that, Carl. Not at all. You wonder whether it is, you know, the fact that you have to fly out here all the way to London and, you know, you have a bit of that brain fog early on in the game and it takes you to half time. But this time they'll try the fake. And they get a little bit going, but two flags down again. So they're never really going to get to the 33-yard uh, line of the NFL Academy, which is where they needed to get to. But they elect to go for it. Holding, offense number 25. That penalty declines. First down. Well, I can just repeat the commentary that I gave some moments ago. Another holding penalty to Shane. As you look at the Tottenham Hotspur logo up there in this beautiful Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. You get to actually go up there to Shane. You can go up there and stand by the cockerel and watch. Yeah, I know. What, what a view from up there. I wish I wish we got the opportunity to commentate from up there. That would be a great, great experience. I saw some guys up there earlier. It was giving me vertical. Four minutes left in the second quarter. Let's see what the NFL Academy offense has in store. First and ten. The NFL Academy got the ball back after that fake punt. And now they're pointing, and now the flag's going to come in against the academy, and they're going to march back five yards on a false start. Everyone's got the jitters. Who false knows, Cal? Offense number 72, five-yard penalty. Come on, back. First step. Both teams might just be so excited to just be in the stadium, you know, they're, they're, just, they're just ready to go. They're just ready to, you know, burst off the line. Who knows? First and 15 for the NFL Academy. Five minutes, 21. Plenty of time for Academy to score again. Is this time to give it to Seelig? It's one on one and he beats his man to the edge. And now he's ducking and diving his way behind some great blocking on the edge. That is going to be right at the yard marker, and they're going to move the chains again. So Seelig with some beautiful running on the edge. Here's the replay. Good blocking there from Sebastian Harris on the defensive backs, and Seelig just patient and picking his way, and another first down. Great running by the German. Let's try and get the ball out to the flat, and that's some good defending by Erasmus Hall. Rallied quickly to the ball. Troni had to get that one out quite quickly. Going to give him maybe an inch, but no more. There's Lax. No, he's going to lose a yard, so Lax uh, lost a, a yard on that one, second and 11. Academy already two scores ahead. Driving for their third as the blitz comes right up in the middle. That was a great design blitz. Just that big gap blitz from that linebacker Tyler Izian coming up to put the pressure on Troni. And that's the speed that we're talking about, Carl. You know that that speed from the defense. You know they're cut, they're coming at Troni. They're getting you know they're not making it an easy job for him to let that ball go. They're coming at him. They're giving him that pressure. Third and eleven. Erasmus Hall will not want to give up a third score before the half. Playing that three-man defensive line, and then they send Blitz. Troni trying to work out where it's going to come from. They send five. Here's the Blitz. Troni immediately under pressure, but he's got the right play called screen to Seelig. And Seelig gets boomed, but not before he picks up a gain of eight. Jelani Hercules on the tackle. Holding, offense number 72, 10 yard penalty from the previous spot, replay third down. That's a big blow, Carl, that's a big blow. These, these penalties, man. Yeah, you'll see it here. Just to the left of your frame, there's the hold. And just held enough to prevent him getting to the quarterback. Called on Oscar Poiser again. Troni, third and 17, flips it to Seelig. Seelig now tries to get past the tackle, and that's a good open field tackle. 
Tyler Izian, the linebacker, who's had a good series, put pressure on Troni early and now makes the tackle. But uh, fourth down and ten. It's in that place in the field where the academy might look to go for this. I like the way the NFL Academy offense is really using all their players. They're using their wide receivers, their tight ends, their running Time backs. Out by the NFL Academy. They're first at 3-3-2. Three, three, first time out for the NFL Academy. I wonder what Steve and the NFL Academy are cooking up over there on their side. Just that shot of the NFL shield. So two teams both on the uh, on the field right now, huddling up. Neither of the two teams seems particularly intimidated by the occasion. They seem equal to it, don't they? And that's been great to see. I mean, yeah, there's been mistakes from Erasmus Hall, lots of penalties, but you don't feel these two teams, uh, you know, they seem big enough for it. The athletes are really putting on a great display under these lights. 100%, you know, the NFL Academy, you know, they, they played IMG last week and, you know, arguably we can say that IMG are one of the best of the best, you know, so if they can compete and, you know, kind of be on par with them, then definitely, you know, they're ready for the, the competition that Resmond who are going to bring. So they don't seem overall at all to these young men on either side as fourth and nine comes up. And after talking about it, they will try and convert this to keep the pressure on Erasmus or Troni will roll to his right-hand side. And now tries to go over the top, that's good defending! And that looks like it might be a pick, and it is a pick. Erasmus Hall with the turnover that they need. Great piece of defending that time from Josiah Andrews, Jojo Andrews, a defensive back with a great interception. Here's the replay to Shane. Trying to get the ball to Winters. And Jojo Andrews with the big turnover. 3.24 left on the clock, so plenty of time. First interception of the game, you know, Troy was just trying to roll out. You know, the pressure was quite intense by the defence. You know, you just had to let go and, you know, the defence were there. Thought that Troni was actually going to come underneath on the pass, but does try and get over the top. Defender makes a great play. Trying to find the edge on Erasmus Hall on first down. And again, the NFL Academy don't give up too much. Three and a half yards, second and six, seven and second, second and seven rather. Can Erasmus Hall get something going at the end of this first half? They really need it, Cal, they need it. They need a little bit of motivation to get them going. Handoff up the middle. And that, good to see, because that carrier was a mere morrow. You remember he got injured earlier on in Q2. And let's have a look at that interception again and just see how close this play was. And we'll come back to it when we can. As we get back to the live action, we don't want you to miss anything. Kendu Brown then, quarterback, he'll be pleased that he's got his running back, Morrow, back in the field with him. Gets this one to the flat. And again, that's great defending. Lyric Samuel was the receiver. But they're so quick to the flat, these defenders. It's a shame. Henry Lau was there, you know, just the speed, you know, like... <laughs> That Loughborough pro program is getting them really ready, you know, they're ready for this competition, they're ready for the speed of, you know, that American opposition, you know, so great tackle by Henry Lowes and the defense are doing a great job of just shutting down any runs or any passes from the Erasmus Hall team. It was definitely one of the key battles, the battle to the edge, the battle for the edge. And it's the two minute warning at two minutes exactly. Two minutes to go then. NFL Academy, two scores up. But on this pick, gave Erasmus Hall the ball back. Here is the interception. We're just watching the feet. Jojo, to see how close he is to the sideline. Touch there, touch there, and he's in bounds. Great job on the interception from Jazeera Andrews. 
And their senior defensive backs and one of the captains on that team and really stepping up, making a captain's play. You know, those are the type of plays that, you know, the leaders need to be making on the team to, to motivate and encourage the other players to do more. Hand off. Flag down. Player down. A little bit of shoving down there from the NFL Academy and Erasmus Hall. Mia Morrow on the carry, carry again. Holding, offence number 77, that penalty declined, result of the play brings up, third down. You can see why Daniel Langfield is so frustrated on the sideline, you know, every time we go to him on the camera, just penalties again. But this time, NFL Academy decide to take the down, take them third and ten, rather than take the penalty. Pressure coming now on Brown, and he's going to go deep to... Oh, what a great defensive play that was again. It's Brandon again with a great defensive play. Brandon Bryant, who's tipped that one away. Brown just can't seem to throw over the top of him. Here's the replay. Trying to get the ball to Jojo Andrews, who just got the interception, plays wide receiver and defensive back, and he's obviously one of those... Fast, fast guys to Shane. I know you've got some speed. I mean, you can see it on the field as well. Yeah, you know, in America, being able to play both positions, you know, it, sh it shows that you're an athlete, you know. Great, great defense by, you know, Brandon and, you know, getting there. He's, he's, he's angry because he wants, a, he wants a pick. He wants an interception. He wants to, you know, get something to kind of put his name on the board a little bit more. But great defense by him. You can see the speed. Now, we've seen some bizarre plays on fourth down, haven't we, from Erasmus Hall. We saw a kick that went straight up into the air. We saw a fake... It was, you know, fourth and 30. It's the offense. And we've Five also seen this from Erasmus Hall, which is these repetitive false starts that just keep putting them in a hole, even when they make a play, putting themselves right back in a hole. What do you think it is, Cal? What do you think is, is, you know, causing all these penalties? Similar thing happened to IMG last time, and I'm wondering whether it is that adjustment as the punt goes up and Lax will field this at his own 45, trying to find the edge. And again, that speed of the coverage unit will give him barely a yard on the return. So the academy will come out with 142 on the clock at their 46. And yeah, getting back to your question, I mean, we saw it with IMG, we're seeing it here. IMG went in at halftime, they made some adjustments and out came out and they did, you know, they scored twice in that Q3. You wonder whether Erasmus Hall, they need to just get around their coaching staff and really have a conversation about what's gone on, put it behind him and come back out in the second half. Yeah, like, you know, one minute, 44 till half time, you know, both teams are going to go into the locker room and, you know, First have a pep foul, talk. Illegal block below the waist. Number 52 on the kicking team. A 15-yard penalty be assessed from the end of the run. First down. So Malik Person with another critical penalty, which is going to march IMG right back into Erasmus Hall territory with 142 left. Took an interception to shut them down last time, but they're coming back all over again. Erasmus Hall will need to defend it. Here's a replay. Just watch number 52. You can see the block going in low right there, and you can't do that on a punt. Dangerous play. Trying to keep players safe at that line of scrimmage. Troni goes to the edge, and it's caught. First down, Winter again on the sideline. Troni, accurate on those edge plays. As we said, Carl, you know, we knew that this wasn't going to be the last time he was going to call his name, you know, making plays, being a ball player. Troni, another set of downs, first down, goes to the flat again. I think this one's going to be... Are oh, they going to call it a catch? Wow, crowd. Want to see that one again. Ben Lax seemed to... Double bounce, didn't it, in front of him, but Academy are going to go quick. No instant replay here, Troni with the flick, and now acres of space in front of him, but closed down quickly, and Troni will just go to ground. Very close again to the yard marker. Seemed like he had acres of space, but so fast, Erasmus Hall in converging on the quarterback. Just seems like the NFL Academy, you know, they, they have a lot of space to do things, and yeah, like, once that, that space is found, then Erasmus will come in, but 
shouldn't be that much space on the field. Yeah, you're right to Shane. Third and short. Troni turns all the way back round and gets the ball to Seelig on the edge. But that's going to go for no gain. Third and one. Interesting play there. The quarterback, you know, Troni looks to his right and then he turns all the way around. What, what, uh, how, designing that play in that way to Shane, what sort of advantage does that give you? Just kind of fools the defenders, you know, they think that you're going one way, then you turn it around, Five fool out. them, go the other way. The NFL Academy, their second, 31 seconds remaining in the half. Let's have a look at the touchdown so far as Academy try and drive for their third. This is the opening one. Just a great slant run to Winter. Right under the posts, and Troni did such a great job in getting that to his man quickly. Second touchdown was an even better one. Look at Troni directing traffic. Look at this double catch from Winter. Gets his feet down. And that's been the two scores so far, both going to the Brian Winter. You can tell that, you know, Troni has his targets. He has his targets, and, you know, if they're, they're, they're doing well for him, they're catching balls, he's going to go to them. Again, the whistle's coming. Time out or by Erasmus Hall. Their second, 31 seconds in the half. Critical down, fourth and two. Academy elect to keep their team out there on the field. They're looking to put Erasmus Hall away rather than bring Quinn out for the kick. What do you think the thinking is around that? I think they're going to do something creative, you know, as we saw, you know, last game, you know, with Brown Winter, you know, they're going to do something that you don't expect. So it's, it's interesting, you know, this NFL Academy offense, you know, they're, they're creative. So I'm looking forward to see what they do here. If they get this, you know, these two yards, it's going to be quite hard for Rasmus Hall to stop them with an extra four set of downs. Is that interception again? That shut down. Oh, this is the incompletion, yeah, and you can see that uh, this is what the crowd were angry about. It looked like that ball hit the turf just as Lax went to ground to catch it. Lax almost reacts as if he didn't catch it. Flag down again on this fourth down. So you haven't missed anything as we looked at that replay. Been a lot of flags in this half. A lot of flags, Cow, a lot of flags, you know. It slows down the momentum. Offside, defensive left end, lined up in the neutral zone. It's a five yard penalty, results in a first down. Oh no. First down in the field academy, we just spoke about this, Cow. You know, we just said if they get a first down, then it could change the game here. So close to the end zone. Rasmus Hall just handing them the yards. Can't seem to stay onside. Erasmus Hall in this half. And you know coach Daniel Langfield. Well, he'll be fine about being outplayed on the field, but he certainly won't be fine about all these penalties as Troni with a fresh set of downs. Right. Lofts one to a wide open receiver. Third touchdown. And that one's gone to Ben Lax in the corner of the end zone. Lax on the board. And the Academy at the end of this first half pulling away. Easy touchdown for Ben Lax right there. Just just wide open. This is the second time we've seen wide receivers just wide open. Troni knew he was going to go to Lax, never took his eyes off him and just in acres of space in the back of the end zone. Great patience by Troni, you know, just scanning the field, just seeing who was open. He saw Ben Lax was open, threw him the ball. Easy six. There's Ben, uh, Brian Winter that comes in to celebrate. You have to feel like Erasmus, all eyes on Winter, and Lax just creeps in the back of the end zone, right? This point after, however, is good. It did sort of get a partial block, but Quinn put enough power in it, as there is another flag, however, right in the middle of the field there. It did look like there was a little bit of confusion, a little bit of a delay, and then Erasmus weren't sure whether to go or not.
Still talking about this flag of the referees. That's what we're waiting to hear. Unsportsmanlike conduct, leaping. Number 11 on the defence. That penalty is declined. The result of the try is good. That's a leaping penalty. We've seen some uh, plays you don't see a lot, some calls, some uh, fouls you don't see a lot. We've seen that the one from signalling on the defender, and then there was a, a clip from 52 on the punt, and now a leaping penalty on the punt. Clearly, Erasmus all trying to jump over the top, Polamalu style, and get a block. <laughs> You're right, Carl. You know, there's been some different calls today, you know, but the referees are on it, they're doing their job, they're making sure, you know, that nothing. Obviously, you know, NFL Academy play here in the UK, Rasmus Hall play in the US, so, you know, some of the tendencies that they have over there, the referees are being strict to make sure that nothing is done differently and, you know, we're all playing with the same rules. Absolutely. 26 seconds left in the half. NFL Academy up by three scores. Low kick from Quinn, takes a hop, picked up at the five. Trying to find the edge again, and does find the edge, but now they're going to call NFL Academy on what will probably be a horse collar tackle. It was Desmond Allen on the return, trying to make something happen, but I think this is going to go against the Academy and give Rasmus Hall some good field position. Yeah, Sab Harris maybe just tackled a little bit too high there. First foul, illegal horse collar tackle, kicking team, number 11. 15-yard penalty from the end of the run, first down. We can see a highlight for Rasmus Hall is definitely their special teams. Their special teams comes out fast, you know, like, it gives them good field position when they're starting, but just need that when we actually get onto the drive, you know, help them to move the chains a little bit more. It's one of our production crew here getting some good shots of Erasmus Hall. Beautiful to have so many different cameras set up as well and get all the different angles as we watch this game that's what a stadium like this provides you that so fortunate to final play the game here by the nfl academy their third and final at 19 seconds remaining in the half and it means i guess to shane you get some great footage to go through at the end of the game you can show the coaches show the players and really learn from the experience Definitely, especially for, you know, the academy guys when they're putting clips and even for Rasmus Hall as well when they're putting highlights together, you know, coaches can really see that, you know, they're playing in legitimate, prestigious stadiums such as, you know, the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium and what great film to piece together being in such a, you know, luxurious stadium. 19 seconds left. You are the NFL Academy head coach, Steve Hagen. You're going for more or you just want to get off the field now? I think, I think, I think if you're Steve Hagen, you're going for more, you know, you, you really want to show that, you know, you're confident, you know, you're here to play and, you know, you're not going to give them, you know, what they think that they're going to get. So Steve Hagen's coming in with a lot of confidence and, you know, he, he, you know, he has loads, loads of experience in the league, you know, he's going to come and show, you know, why he's here. Rasmus Hall with a great catch off his shoestrings. Catch is made by Lyric Samuel. Really difficult catch. And again, Brown just throwing those balls so low to these receivers. Samuel that time doing everything he can to get some yards, picks up three. Time out by Rasmus Hall. Their third and final, six seconds remain in the half. Six seconds. So we're going to see, likely, can do Brown hurl it into the end zone. And just counting those uh, NFL Academy defensive backs. Four defensive backs lined up now at about the between the 15 and 20 yard line reset the game their own end zone. nine seconds remaining in the half oh, umpires put an extra three seconds back on the clock for erasmus hall so maybe a couple of plays if they're quick a couple of plays you know they're definitely gonna have to step up the tempo a little bit you know in and out of the huddle trying to go out of bounds you know just to save themselves a little bit of time but you know, with nine seconds on the clock, Cal, what do you think they're going to do? What do you think their game plan is for this? We've seen them a bit tricky, haven't we? We've seen them on the reverse. They've clearly got some trick plays, you know, deep in that playbook. Maybe a hook and ladder. They've got the speed to maybe run that. Maybe just they, they run something quick to the sideline and then rally on the ball and try and just hurl it into the end zone. Anything can happen, folks, under the Tottenham Hotspur lights. Nine seconds until the second half.
trips to the body muse screen. Kendu Brown takes the snap, looking to the single receiver side, and he'll go straight down. Defensive end coming in. And the academy don't give him any time to really let that play develop. Silas Sabanda, I think it was, number 42, That's coming in from, from, uh, from his defensive back position. And that is how the half will end. It will end with uh, an NFL Academy sack. And the NFL Academy go in at the half, up three scores. Who would have predicted that? NFL Academy 21, Erasmus Hall, nothing. What a way to end the half, Cal. You know, first sack of the game so far, you know, by NFL Academy. And what a way for that sack to happen, to end the first half. So, uh, look at some of these highlights and we'll send you back down to uh, John Jackson and Phoebe Schechter for a halftime show. And they've got all sorts of things lined up, so don't go away. We're so happy to have you here in this beautiful October evening. You can see the lights of Tottenham Hotspur Stadium as we bring you this uh, brilliant event, the sandwich between those two NFL international games. It's, of course, the fourth unofficial international game as we go to these highlights. So this was early on in the half with the great touchdown of Brian Winters and that opened the scoring for the NFL Academy. Nice moves in the end zone as well to Shane. I think that's a celebration, you know, he's, he's been doing that a couple times, you know, last game he did it, this game he did it twice, you know, so that, that might be his celebration, Carl. Just beats his man under the goalpost and uh, gets a good spin on that ball. I'll tell you, you have to teach me how to do that one. <laughs> Point after from Quinn was good. Erasmus had all sorts of problems. This was a fumble on the next series, which uh, was just a mistake on the handoff. And then uh, they just went from problem to problem as they get called on a pass interference call right there from their defensive back, which put the NFL Academy in great field position to come in and score again to shame. Definitely. This was a great play from the NFL Academy quarterback, Sebastian Harris. Great balance by step to stay, to stay in bounds. And this is that amazing touchdown. You've got to admire both Troni and Winters. Look at the play at both ends. I mean, that is an NFL highlight reel play. That's a great catch. That's a, that's a great catch. Great control. Great keeping his feet in bounds, you know, like, Great, great by Troy, you know, to, to direct his wide receivers where he needs them to be, especially for the quarterback, you know, you need to tell them and you need to put them in places where you can throw them the ball and the pressure from Erasmus Hall's defense, you know, but Troy had enough time to just let that ball go and great touchdown. Shows amazing maturity in these young lads to, to put a play like that together. Many of them only ever played the sport for a couple of years. But uh, credit to the coaching staff for getting them to the point where they're making those sorts of plays at this point after it goes over. But the NFL Academy weren't done yet. Come back with a third touchdown. This time, everyone looks at Brian Winter. But it's Ben Lax that's open in the back of the end zone. So, to Shane, amazing first half. And uh, were you expecting this coming? Because we were we were nervous, right? We were expecting Erasmus Hall to come out and just give us fireworks. Yeah, yeah. Like, honestly, as you said, like didn't really know what to expect. You know, we knew it was going to be a good game, you know, but we didn't know who was going to come out on top, you know, so just to see the NFL Academy dominate, you know, clearly they're, they're still high off that win against IMG and they're just rolling that same energy into this game right now, you know, they're, they're dominating, they're dominating right here and, you know, what a way to dominate at home, twice at Loughborough and the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Great half so far, let's hand it back down to John Jackson and Phoebe Schechter and friends for your halftime show. Yeah, thanks very much, guys. Joined by NFL royalty here, Super Bowl winner and Dominican <laughs> Sue. Uh, you've just uh, turned up here. You brought your family down. You've got your twins here ransacking the buffet somewhere. Uh, I mean, it's an amazing stadium. Did you ever get to play here? Yeah, I did. Uh, actually, with the Bucks, uh, I think it was back in 2019. We came out here and had uh, a great time. Enjoyed. Uh, I don't remember if we won or not, but I know I enjoyed my London times. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, London is a great city, and we, we've heard from everyone that's uh, been chatting to us saying what they've been doing out in London. But coming here. 
whether you're from the academy or whether you're from Erasmus, you know, to play in this stadium, it, I, you know, it's a magical moment in a career. And you know, when you were a young player at their age, I'm, yeah. I'm sure it would have absolutely blown you away, right? Yeah, if I was a young lad like these these guys out here, I would have been elated to have an opportunity to play in the uh, in the Spurs Stadium. Let alone be able to come across the pond and then obviously come down and uh, be a part of the academy. So. I think it's a great opportunity for this youth, and I'm excited for them. And uh, it's a good game so far. Yeah, amazing for the uh, for the academy. Yeah, hugely. I mean, now this weekend we'll be calling the game, uh, the Ravens Titans game. I mean, that must be quite thrilling to think about sitting here watching professionals. I mean, we get high school this week. NFL this weekend, are you looking forward to that as well? Yeah, I'm excited for the uh, Ravens-Titans game. Got friends on both sides, so we'll see how <laughs> that all comes together. But I think it'll be a big, exciting game, and uh, I'm expected to see some some hard running for Lamar Jackson and okay. uh, Derrick Henry. <laughs> I know a lot of people in the UK are really excited to see Lamar. Now, you've been here for, what, four or five weeks. You've been working alongside Phoebe for Sky Sports. Yep. It means you've had an extended amount of time in the UK. What have you done that's a little bit, you know, not touristy? <laughs> Surely you've done something, not right? Not Touristy's okay as well. Uh, yeah, touristy's okay, <laughs> but honestly, I, I got my two little lads with me, so we're in parks all the time. Love Quorum's par fields mm -hmm. uh, and been walking around to many different parks. We were actually at the London Eye the other day, so oh, nice. got to experience that for them uh, for the first time, my fourth or fifth time. So <laughs> it just, I love being in the city. It's probably my eighth time being here, and it's exciting to uh, spend the time with the family. Well, we've been really enjoying, you know, seeing you on the coverage of the NFL yes. out here, and as we mentioned, you know, the Jacksonville Jaguars were here against the Bills, me against Phoebe in a way uh, on Sunday. We won't say the result. Phoebe doesn't want to talk about it. Uh, and it's, you know, it's amazing to, you know, I honestly, I can't get over the fact that we were watching the NFL here on Sunday morning and now we're watching, you know, the Academy playing this high school that have won five championships under this head coach. And, you know, also we've got players out there from NFL Africa. Yep. And I know you have Cameroonian uh, background. And, yep. You know, you must be proud to see these guys coming through, working with the academy and getting out there on the field. Yeah, it's amazing. And I, I hold my Cameroonian roots very close to me. My dad originally from there, something I'm, I've, always, I've always prided myself on and being able to see the next generation potentially come into the NFL and be a part of it is very exciting. Yeah, we'll see. It's been great chatting to you. Thank you. Uh, we're going to let you go. We're going to let you find those twins, make sure they're not causing any chaos. Yeah. I imagine they might be, but I think we'll let them Control off. If they're anything chaos. like their dad, they yeah. are. Yeah, I'm going to be honest. I'm not going to mess with you. Uh, we're going to hear from another Super Bowl winner in just a second. But first, let's take a look at the good work being done by NFL Africa. Let's go, we rocking, bro. I remember this name, this face, this flag. Ready? Oh, what? You ain't getting out you know why we're here. Yes, sir. Compete on three. One, two, three. Compete. Well, I'm here. I caught up with the OC Minera along the sideline here at the NFL Academy game. First off, we can't not talk about this Academy game. What have you thought so far of the first half? How crazy is this? Look at where we're at. <laughs> I mean, a couple of years ago, no one would have ever imagined something like this taking place. But we're here at Tottenham Stadium. Crowd is going nuts. It's a, it's a good game. We're having a great time. Um, I'm just so proud of everything that the NFL has accomplished here. Uh, so much hard work went into this, and we're really excited. And th thanks to you know the team that came out here all the way from Brooklyn. I saw my New York people in the crowd yes. over here. Gave them some love. <laughs> so we're really happy about that too. 
I can imagine that love was mutual. Now, you said just then, who would have imagined something like this? And that makes me think immediately of NFL Africa and everything you have done. You've got five players from NFL Africa on the NFL Academy roster. Can you just tell the audience a bit more about what you're doing over there and all the amazing initiatives? Yeah, well, I think they say, um, you know, talent is evenly distributed across the world, but opportunity isn't. Um, so I think we all know that Africa has some of the best athletes in the world, if not the best, but they just don't have the opportunity. So NFL Africa really was creating that pipeline, giving them the opportunity to come out here, get an education, some of them actually in the NFL, and just continue to grow the game globally, grow the game in Africa, and give people a chance, because obviously um, they need it, they appreciate it, they're down here, they're doing their, their thing. Um, we had a couple of players, we got one who's in Tennessee right now, Emmanuel Okoye, we got some who have scholarships already to America, so overall it's just been a really, really great experience, and we're really excited for everything that's to come for the rest of them. Yeah, absolutely. Now, I know you're a man who is a visionary, but did you ever think that you would have some of your athletes here playing at Tottenham Stadium, some of them playing for the Tennessee Titans, or did you just know all along that this is the potential? Yes, I saw it all. Yes. Everything. Yes, 100%. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to claim I knew exactly what was exactly. going to happen. Yes, 100%. <laughs> That's how I knew you would say that. I knew you would say that. Jay Bell would be very proud of you right now. You've let the people know. But honestly, I think everyone is so happy and proud of all the work that you're doing. I know you're also working with flag football. Mm. You know, some really exciting news coming out lately about the potential of it getting in the 2028 Olympics. Can you talk a little bit about the flag programs you have going on as well? Yeah, flag is easily accessible. It's a sport that both girls and boys can play, right? So it's a, it's a vehicle basically for growing the game more. Um, tackle football is a lot more difficult to play, a lot more infrastructure required. But flag is easy. It's fun. It's unisex. Anybody can play it. So we really want to use that game to catapult the game or to grow the game of American football globally and I think flag is a great initiative so we're really supporting that and we're behind it yeah amazing OZ such a pleasure to have you thank you so much for joining us here today go enjoy the rest of the game <laughs> You see, the thing about Phoebe Schechter is that Phoebe Schechter knows absolutely everybody, from the barista <laughs> in the cafe here to random photographers. If they're feeding me, then yes, I don't, we can all be friends. Obviously, you know uh, OC very well. Great to <laughs> hear from him. I know he's uh, had to rush off now. Now joined by another legend, legend. and you know, Jacksonville are the home team a lot of the time in the UK. And uh, Maurice Jones, Drew, you played here with the Jacksonville Jaguars yes. back in 2013, also came back with the Raiders. So you're used to coming over to London. You're used to watching football here. First thing to say, I mean, this stadium's incredible. <laughs> oh, no, this stadium's amazing. Uh, last year when we were here, uh, I was on, the, I walked up on the thing and did walked you? around. Yeah, we did a whole commercial there. Uh, so I do Monday Night Football for Channel 5, which is pretty awesome. So we did there. And then to be at the games and to be with all the people, uh, it's exciting. Now to see high school football being played in this stadium and the way the academy's playing right now is amazing. I was going to say your experience of playing in the UK, uh, you know, you've been over and we, we discussed that you've been at Wembley, but also you've come back, you've seen games at Twickenham and now you've seen games, you know, here at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. What's been your experience of how football's grown since it first came over? I mean, the Jags have been playing <laughs> yeah. here for 10 years now. Have you noticed a growth? Oh, no question. I, I think the knowledge of the game is different uh, than it was back in 2013 when our kicker was getting all the cheers and stuff like that. But now you're, you can go to a pub, you can go out on the street and talk football with just anyone. Um, to see again the academy, how far it's come where you have a high school football being played here, tackle football, and they're playing really well. And to see them understand the game, tackle, block, all the things they need to, to go down and to who they're coached by is important, right? Because they're learning the game the right way and they, they're playing really well. And so you, little things like that, I'm sure eventually youth football will come in this thing as well. Mm -hmm. But it, again, it's just slowly but surely, uh, the people of the UK are doing a great job of uh, accepting it and really taking it as their own. I think it's great that you know when we come down here, Phoebe, and, and when you you know you're here as well, you'll see all the different jerseys. It won't. I mean, Sunday was very Bills heavy. I have to say, probably the most <laughs> yeah. heavy game in in favor of one team. But you'll see jerseys from every different team. Imagine that with with soccer here. Imagine if you came and sat here with an Arsenal shirt in right. Tottenham. That would not happen. <laughs> no, no, no. It's funny because uh, again, everyone has their. The thing about the NFL is everyone. You are free to pick who you want to be. You can be yep. from California and be a Bills fan. Yep. You can be from New York and be a Jags fan. You can be from London and be a Jags fan. I think that's what makes our game so special where, like, Arsenal, it's a neighborhood, and it's in there, and that makes that special, too. Like, I've, I just learned that I, you know, I tell people I'm a Tottenham Hotspur fan because this is the stadium that we're at. This is the one I've been to. I've met a lot of their players. And then people are looking at me sideways like, bro, you're not from there. Like, <laughs> how are you that fan? Like, you need to be this. And I'm like, no, this is who I like. This is who I've met. This is what it's about. And so it's exciting. And I, again, 
There were a lot of Bills fans, and it was exciting, but there were a lot of 32 jerseys, too. I was going to say. There were a lot of 32. Yes, there were. Oh. People were, I mean, people have been able to see you on the sideline here at our international games, and you are definitely the, the face of NFL when you're here. And, you know, I had the, the honor of doing the panel with you. I mean, the amount of, of jerseys of yours that were being worn and the history, I mean, you carry a, a lot of weight over here. It's funny. Uh, I don't, it doesn't seem that way, but, you know, being here and really – first time ever leaving the country was coming here to play so that was like a big thing for me because I'm I wasn't a big traveler and not only that now coming back year after year after year meeting more people engaging with the fans you know the support they have for me is it's is been awesome and so I try to do the best I can I know people want to be on the jumbotron so the best way to say is if you have a 32 Jags jersey says drone drill in the back stand up and then we pan out and we get everybody on there so uh but again it's always it's all good and fun I again the Bills fans were awesome uh, I know the Jags, when they played the Falcons, that was an awesome game. And then we expect to have a, an even better game with the Ravens versus the Titans, two really good AFC teams with a, a, a pretty much an MVP in Lamar Jackson, mm -hmm. uh, Derrick Henry, who we call the unicorn, yeah. right? Like, that, like most running backs may be a little bit taller than me, but that guy is like a giant, yeah. right? And so I got a chance, <laughs> and, and it comes full circle. And Jax, he's from Jacksonville. I got a chance to watch him in high school. Wow. And imagine him versus, like, kids out oh here, gosh. like, at that size, right? So <laughs> Cheat code. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so to see all those things and, and to be a part of this and to be able to help grow the game, is to see players grow, see the fandom grow, it's, it's been awesome. Yeah, it's been also great with, uh, you know, some Ghanaian players as well yeah. that have come from NFL Africa. We've just seen the video, and obviously you spoke to Osi as well. So uh, that, that's huge for NFL Africa. Phoebe, I know that, you know, let's, let's just talk about the game a little bit. Number seven. Uh, Mr. Winter, I mean, uh, what a game he's having. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. It's been incredible to see, right, because he's a receiver that obviously has a great communication and connection. He comes really friendly to the quarterback. Watching him out there, you know, he has been the go-to man. And to see how he's developed, he's a, a player that we've brought in from Germany, which, again, goes to show to the international nature of the NFL Academy. But, I mean, you, you're out there. You're watching this, too. Yeah. Tell us. What do you Well, seeing? first of all, I mean, he has he – has, bounce like he goes up and gets the ball then he has great hand-eye coordination and then you talked about the communication with the quarterback as we're watching highlights here when the quarterback's scrambling he's moving with them yep. he's finding ways to go and that all comes from reps and, and understanding what it's like as we see him here this is the play he just puts his Incredible. hand up goes up and gets the ball and and they're going against a really good football team from brooklyn new york who's won the state title there and the way that the academy's playing with the, the the quarterback has time mm -hmm. when he doesn't he's getting out of the pocket the receivers are going with him they're able to run the ball i mean defensively they're flying all around yeah every in all three phases they're dominating this game and so it's exciting to see that again as being a part of it and when we went to ghana getting some of those players here to see some of those guys playing for where they came from we're like teaching them how to get into a stance and teaching them how to get off and now to see these guys out here playing it again it it brings a lot of joy because the game of our game is special and i think not only has london and the uk seen it but now the world is starting to see it which is awesome and that's i mean what's so incredible is you've literally had a snapshot of it right you went to ghana and did amazing work out there with oc and the team saw that now you're coming here seeing into action now imagine a couple years from now when some of these players get into the nfl uh, i mean nfl college these guys are and then uh, credit to the coaches and the trainers and the staff of the the uh, uk academy because again you have to put a lot of time and effort and energy into these guys to get them to where they are now watching tape eating right working out you know, being diligent with your studies because those things all matter when, you, when you're you trying to get to the next level. And, uh, I mean, there's a lot of guys here. And, you know, let me say this, too. I'm doing my best because I coach high school football in the I was going to say, come on, coach. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to get my high school right. to come here next year, which I think would be pretty fun as well. And, 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 again, to see the competition here, they definitely can hang with a lot of the teams that we play as well. Quick one. If you were Danny Lamberg now when you're 21 points to 0 down at halftime, what kind of things are you saying in that locker room? Uh, down 21? Ooh, that, I don't think those are things you can say on TV. Okay. Uh, but the message would be they scored 21. Now it's our turn to return that favor and get back out there. We're, we've missed a couple plays. Uh, we have a couple things that haven't gone our way. But we've had some explosive plays, and we're just an uh, inch or here or there away from breaking the big one. So let's get back to it. But it'd be some explicits in there as well. Just, <laughs> yeah. you got to get their attention, right? we got to get your attention and then <laughs> get their attention. And play. Yes. Exactly. We'll leave it there. We'll let you tell us those when the broadcast finish. And Bruce Jones show, Jacksonville Jaguars legend running back. Thank you so much for joining us. We're going to hand straight back for second half commentary now uh, with Carl Walkinshaw and Tosh Shane Boyce. Welcome back to the booth. There are the flags. The NFL shield right in the middle between the... Great Britain Union Jack 
and the American flag. And gee, well, they were having a party down there, weren't they? I mean, how many people? And Dominic and Sue's down there. Osi's down there. Maurice Jones, Drew. <laughs> how come we didn't get invited to the party? Like, honestly, they were having a great time. But I hope everyone at home had a great halftime show. They all enjoyed themselves. You know, some legendary people in the building tonight. You know, so I hope you guys had fun. And can't wait, Carl, to get into the second half of football. I know. It's great to see so much support for this NFL Academy and so many superstars and Super Bowl winners out here supporting these young men ball out on both teams but especially for the nfl academy but uh, welcome up to our booth here at the tottenham hotspur stadium great to see you with us and keeping this uh hope you're enjoying the game 21 nothing to the nfl academy but you feel like erasmus hall you know that great question that john alster maurice jones drew how do you get back into it and he said you know they need to come back from 21 points down that repay repay the 21 points back to the nfl academy they've got to think in that way right 100%, you know, I mean, they, they, they've won five championships before, so clearly they, they have that champion mentality with them. So, you know, I don't know what they've done in other games. I'm sure they've faced adversity before. So now it's time, you know, they're, they're in a situation where they need to come back, they need to win, where they need to try to win a game. What, what are they going to do when they're pushed in the corner? Now, it's interesting. We talked about the fact that most teams, when they win the toss, they defer to that second half. But actually, you know, Erasmus Hall came out and they took the ball first which means the NFL Academy with three scores ahead are actually going to have an opportunity to mount a drive to put Erasmus Hall effectively away very difficult to come down from three scores let alone four scores so the first task for Erasmus Hall has got to be getting this offense off the field uh, what do you think of the keys they're going to need to do in this next drive I think definitely for this next drive, this next half as a whole, they're going to need to you know, have a little bit more confidence. That energy that they brought in the beginning of the game, they need to kind of follow that through in the second half. You know, like, Just like you know, against the IMG game, first half wasn't the best half. Second half, they came out a little bit more confident. They, you know, they had a good pep talk and that's what the QB needs to be a little bit more confident. You know, he needs to throw better balls and you know, give their wide receivers a chance. Ellis Johnson will kick it off and it will be picked up out of bounds at the 30 yard line so that special teams coverage does their job in terms of minimizing any return for Arthur Debochi the defensive back from the Netherlands coming in to field that return and he's saying yeah keep talking lads we're gonna keep coming <laughs> that's the confidence of the NFL Academy but I mean hey when you're 21 up you can do that you sure can it's NFL Academy team full of confidence, not overawed at all by the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. They look like they want to make it their new home. First and ten, this one to start their account will go to Brewer, and that's good defending on the line. They need to get these defenders into the game. You know, Malik Pearson, we've seen some good pressure from him. We've seen some pressure from Tyler Izzy and their linebacker. They have star athletes on this defense, don't they, to, to really put the pressure on the academy and maybe even get a turnover that they need. They definitely do, Carl. They have some good players on their team. You know, just need to see these guys wake up and you know show why they're these star players. Second and nine, and what a great play. They hand the ball to Lax, but he goes absolutely nowhere. Christian Moore, the linebacker, coming off the edge. So clearly some adjustments they've made on defense, certainly on those first two downs that's a massive loss of six yards here's that replay Ben Lex you know just pursuing you know but great pressure by the defense over there you know being able to kind of cut that path short third and 16 now empty set they go to that now familiar empty look does Troni looks over at that defense four defensive backs he's going to throw it short this one to Lax underneath on a kind of jailbreak screen Gets a couple of good blocks, but he's going to be slightly short of that first down yardage. So on third down, looks like Erasmus Hall are going to hold and force a punt from NFL Academy. So first part of the job, trying to get back into this game, done. We knew that Erasmus Hall was going to come up with more energy, you know, definitely knew that the head coach, you know, was going to have a lot of words to say to them. So, you know, good opportunity to see that they're coming out with a little bit more energy, a little bit more tenacity. Let's see how the academy defence holds up. Andy Quinn will kick it away. To that dangerous returner, Jojo, who's lined up at his 20-yard line. Flag down straight away. This will bounce at the 40 and take an Erasmus bounce to the 43. But there is a flag down, way off the play. Nowhere near the line of scrimmage, so we'll just have to see what that is. 
called by the side judge here. No chance of a return for Lyric Samuel. Short kick from Andy, so maybe the tide turning a little bit towards Erasmus Hall at the beginning of this second half. Wonder what they're huddling up about, you know, they're taking their time. You can see that there's, there's hasn't been penalties to start off with, which is obviously good. Spot resulting in a first down. So that's why it was called by the side judge. He's just uh, caught Erasmus Hall off on a substitution infraction. So straight back to the penalties for Erasmus Hall. Just as we were talking about, no penalties being called so far. What a shame, what a shame. Unbelievable how these penalties are just killing Erasmus Hall. You can see the frustration down there by the players as well. You know, players are starting to hold other players accountable. You know, they know that they're now, now that the penalties are starting to tally up, you know, it's costing them. Well, it's so frustrating when you get a team off on the first series of, of the second half and, you know, you, you, your defence is running back out on the field to take on the NFL Academy after that substitution infraction pass over the top and that is oh was he catching it did he catch it waiting for the signal from the referee they're going to give it first down what a spectacular interception just what they needed marquise lawton went horizontal about five yards through the air to pick that one off that was a great interception by Erasmus hall they're, this these are the stuff that we were talking about that's going to get them riled up and get them going they have to get turnovers and here's the first one on the board Great control by the DB just to adjust himself to get to get to that ball. Don't know who Troni was throwing that to. It looks like he was trying to get it to Ben Harris, but well underthrown. Yeah, it looks like Lawton. Sorry, sorry to Shane, go ahead. So I was just gonna say it just looks like they tried to they double team Seb over there and one of the DBs just undercut him and you know managed to get the ball. Absolutely. So the penalty with the substitution infraction. They managed to overcome it with a turnover, and they will get the ball, starting at their 29-yard line. Kendu Brown still out there at quarterback. He's going to throw to his running back in the flat with a good block on the edge, and that's the sort of offense that we know to expect from Erasmus Brown. Crunching tackle by Isaac Barker, the linebacker for NFL Academy but they're going to be very close to the chains, maybe a half a yard short. That was a great block, great reading block by the running back of Mir, you know, being able to see that, that block from the outside and taking it outside to get a few extra yards. Literally second and in inches now after that reception. And in fact, they're going to move the chain. So the umpire comes in and says, no, you've got enough. Amir Morrow with a 10-yard gain, first down Erasmus Hall. So nice play on first down to get a new fresh set. Handoff this time, actually it's a play action, and that is a catch, and still on his feet and driving. That reception, Jalen Bailu, a tight end. And there's been a change at quarterback as well. Wilbert Spell Jr. is now in at quarterback shows what he can do rolling out into space look at the tenacious running of the big senior Jalen Balu to move the chains again Erasmus Hall look like a different team on offense now coming out in the beginning of this second half they do Carl they do and this is what they needed you know a couple of players getting them going and oh go with a run option and they will hand this one off so it's a mere morrow and Wilbert Spell Jr., who's a senior quarterback for Erasmus Hall. In his last year here, and that little partnership gets him five yards on first down. Erasmus Hall looking a little bit more disciplined, you know, hasn't been any penalties so far in this drive, you know, so it's, it's, look, it's looking good, you know, they're, they're actually moving the chains a little bit. Let's see what they can do. The academy defense needs to just shut this down to ensure that to ensure that you know they're keeping that score. So number 12, Spell Junior. 
sends the man in motion and again the whistles come in. Delay, it's the offence, five yard penalty, replay second down. Oh, just when we said the penalty seemed to <laughs> turn the tap on the penalty again, delay again for Erasmus Hall. As so frustrating said, for them. It's that one step forward, two steps back. And you just, it's, it's that, and it's also the momentum killer, isn't it? You know, you get some energy in your team and then march right back, just as you said. Spell Junior then. Will keeping himself towards the sideline and trying to get free and just has to hurl it out of bounds. Henry Lau's again coming with that great speed to, to try to set the QB just as he's trying to roll out. Here is the replay. Look at the pressure from the top side of the screen. You see there, they can't get him, but they rally so quickly, don't they, these defenders? Defender just missed and then Henry Lau's came in just to finish off that tackle. No, no, Agmain was the player that got the initial pressure on Spell Junior. <laughs> Third and ten. Opening drive for Erasmus Hall. Pressure immediately. They'll try and get the screen off. But no chance. Well covered on both ends that time from the NFL Academy defence. Just giving no time for Spell Junior. Had a little motion coming over, the pressure from the NFL Academy. QB just had to let that ball go, you know. Low ball, hit the ground, fourth down, Cal. And you wonder whether Erasmus Hall got the play right or whether there was a miscommunication. They didn't look like they knew how to block up that defensive line. Moving very slowly on their offensive line that time as another flag comes in and this is going to be substitution infraction 12 men in formation on offense five yard penalty replay fourth down oh, i don't even have to say it at sixes and sevens aren't they two substitution infractions you know within the last minute minute and a half yeah that's such a strange call car you know you don't really hear that call happen often so you know it's interesting that it's been called twice today so far and another flag goes up and you just feel like erasmus hall Self-destructing a little bit here with the frustration as that flag was off the ball. After the play was over, on sportsmanlike conduct, number 52 on the offence, 15-yard penalty, replay fourth down. So Malik Pearson, who's a great player, great nose tackle, and he's playing offensive line. You just see him there, just the frustrations boiling over and obviously said something to the referee. Another 15 yards tagged on. Fourth and a mile for Erasmus Hall as the mistakes just killing their chances. Kick goes way up into the air again. Player is down in the middle of the field. Ball went maybe nine yards. They just dive on it and it's gone back to the original line of scrimmage. That drive was going so well, Cowan, just closer to the end you know it's just started to fall apart with the penalties and you know we saw a similar kick like that earlier in the first half and you know same same kick again you know giving the NFL Academy good field position to you know to run the ball or to throw the ball yeah we've got a player down at the 45 yard line and Erasmus player is down and uh, just those mistakes again creeping in and you thought at half time they'd be able to gather the team together and have a word with them and say look you know it was a bad half let's put it behind us Let's play with some, you know, good organisation and some good discipline and get something moving. And they nearly did, but again, the penalty's killing them. Yeah, and as we said, Kyle, you know, those those penalties really do take off the momentum, you know, off the team and, you know, brings brings people's heads down. So, especially in a game like this where they're losing, they really need these chances and, you know, they can't afford to be given any more penalties. It was uh, Malik Pearson that went down and uh, he was... Uh, nose tackle it's just you can see him there hopping on one foot clearly can't put much weight on that left leg and he has a reputation as just a fantastic player we've seen spells during this game of like him him making plays uh, but also causing problems for his defense just watch the right hand side just goes down on his own does Malik 
Uh, then he's clutching his left leg, his left calf. So that'll get checked out on the sideline. And we hope he's okay and it isn't anything long term. Back to the live action Brewer. After that punt that didn't go anywhere. So NFL Academy with Brewer's run goes nowhere. But again, another two players from Erasmus Hall now down on the turf. Both coming to their feet though, so that's good to see. It's quite a competitive game, Carl. You know, guys are going after it. They're battling. They're in the trenches right now. So, you know, you know it's going to be a quite, quite a fierce game. Erasmus Hall haven't given up a score yet. They've got that interception midway through Q3 now. And so they haven't, you know, they've had some problems and misorganisation, but no harm done yet. No real harm in Q3, but they've got to keep NFL Academy out of the end zone here and get a stop. You know, yeah, there's, there's still a lot of time to play football, you know, still NFL Academy, you know, even though they're winning, they still just have to keep going, stick to the same game plan and, you know, just t finish this game and take it home. Second and a short 11 for NFL Academy. Troni joined with two running backs in the backfield and he'll hand this one off to Brewer again, working to his right-hand side. And now, no flags have gone in on that. I think that's just, just end of play shenanigans, but no reason to throw the flag. I feel like the referees know they've thrown a lot of flags, you know, if there, there's a little bit of a little bit of pushing towards the end, you know, we can we can let that slide. Or 72. Get into it. Right there. Both these organizations proud and uh, neither of them wanted to give ground there in the end. Brewer just picks up maybe a yard, so we got third and nine. Blitz coming off the edge. Troni immediately under pressure and goes down. Sack. And it's Tyler Davis, the defensive line, the junior player from Erasmus Hall, that makes the key play on third down. Critical play. Here's a replay. Yeah, you know, first sack for Troni, you know, the pressure, you know, the Erasmus Hall know what down it is. They know that, you know, when the NFL Academy from previous experience get close to that end zone, you know, they wanna, they're going to try to throw the ball, try to get into that end zone. So, you know, good play by them. Now, they've had problems on these punt returns before. And again, the organization, you know, these substitutions are coming in late. You can see them there. Academy ready to go. Who's in the end zone? Let it go. And the flags. Ball is up by Quinn. It's a nice high kick or bounce at the 16 take an academy bounce and come to rest at the 13 where Erasmus Hall will, will take over and you feel like they got away with a few different things in that sort of segment of play but they can now come out and mount a drive this is their opportunity as we said the clock's going down you know five minute 41 to the you know in in the third quarter right now you know it's about to hit the fourth so they really need to utilize and you know use the players that they have new QB in so let's see what the QB can do you know to really get this offense up and going Huddling on the sideline again, our Erasmus Hall as head coach Daniel Langfield just uh, gives his offense the instructions he needs them to execute on this drive. And if they're going to do something, they got to do it quick. Really quick, Carl. Really, really quick. Hand off up the middle. Bit of a push, but nothing there. That dominant NFL Academy defense, you know, running back didn't have a chance. Desmond Allen on the carry. Now they had Wilbur Spell Jr. out as quarterback for Ken Du Brown, and now Ken Du Brown has come back in as the quarterback. So they're rotating their quarterbacks in as well. We'll have to see whether that pays dividends for them. Kendu Brown this time will get that one batted at the line of scrimmage. Low pass. A nice play to get his arms up in the backfield and knock that one down. Matty Kruger, who had a great game last week, uh, last Friday night rather, against uh, IMG. 
He gets his hands to that one. Brings up third and nine. They send five on the blitz. Brown rolls out, tries to hit his receiver, but good coverage on the back end. Can't get it to Lyric Samuel. As we can see again, Brendan still coming down, chasing to try to get that interception today. He's, the, he's hungry. He really, really wants one. He's hungry. He's always available. He's always there. He's, he's putting himself in the right position to try to get that interception. I feel like he's played really well as well. I mean, he did get called on that pass interference, but my feeling was that that was the only play he could have made to keep that player out of the end zone. And it actually prevented a score from Erasmus Hall. And whilst they got that 15-yard penalty, the defence were able to rally. You feel like that was a big opportunity for Erasmus Hall to score in a key play. And then, of course, coming back and nearly getting a pick in the same series. So has played well as Brandon. There he is, the defensive back from Trinidad and Tobago. Fourth and nine. And look at this from Erasmus Hall. And this is why they're having the problems with the penalty and the organisational issues that they're having. And the clock keeps ticking. This is why the substitution infractions are difficult for them as the ball goes up. Again, this is a better punt. Goes about 30 yards. It's backed up. And NFL Academy will take over again with just fantastic field position. And this has been the story of the whole game. It has been, Kyle, you know, you can just see that the confidence that, you know, Rasmus Hall had in the beginning of the game is slowly fading, you know, the, the calls are not coming in properly, people are not knowing that where they're supposed to be, you know, the, the stuff that they were doing early on in the game is kind of slowly fading, and as we said, you know, all those flags and all those penalties can kind of do that to a team and make them kind of lose their, their confidence that they had in the beginning. So Troni goes back to work at the 42, and Rasmus Hall are going to ask their defence again to get this high-powered offense off the field. Selig on the run, he will find the edge and get six. He's a patient runner, isn't he, Selig? Just takes his time, picks his way. Very, very patient, and sometimes that's all it needs to be, you know, it's not always about running hard and running through that hole. Sometimes you have to just let the holes develop and, you know, see what's available. Selig again, trying to bust out of that pile, and keeps him moving. up a game of about four it's going to bring up a very manageable third and short Justin Selig is only small five foot six hundred and eighty pounds but uh, he's got a lot of power in those legs and in that unit that he brings German player both those backfield Brewer and Selig both Germans yeah, they, they got a nice little German combo coming in between them two. This time it's play action, go over the top, complete to Harris. Stays on his feet and he's dragged down, but only just had one tackle and he would have been gone to the end zone. Takes that down to the Erasmus Hall 15-yard line. Play action on third down. What a player, Carl, what a player. Bodies a man. Last defender just gets him, as you said, if he, if that defender wasn't there, you know, didn't clip him, he would have been gone. That would have been another NFL Academy touchdown. How about Troni on third down, fearless, getting that ball into Harris. As they wait for the signal to come in to the NFL Academy. Troni with the clap. Nice edge play again. Selig does well to get out of that first contact, but the rest of the Erasmus Hall defenders arrive. They've defended that edge that has been a highlight for them early in this second half, defending that edge better than they were doing in the first half. Relentless, the academy, aren't they? Don't quick on the huddle, they don't let Erasmus Hall huddled their defense, they stood there at the line of scrimmage just getting the play in. Definitely, they, they're very, very disciplined, very, very drilled, and I feel like that's that's the advantage for the NFL cabinet that they have right now, is just that discipline, just... Selig again with a great block, and now he great bounces run. it to the outside, and just short, will they give him the touchdown? No, he's going to be half a yard short. 
just tried to reach out to the pylon, but I think his knee went down. But nevertheless, great running from Seelig. Got a great block up the middle. And let's watch this on the replay and see how close he gets to that pylon. Look how many defenders are trying to bring him down. There's the knee down there. And good call from the referee. Powerful run, a powerful run. Great run by Seelig. Two backs again, Seelig again, and this time he will get in, it looks like they've confirmed it, touchdown, Seelig, and the NFL Academy as the roars go up here in the home crowd, pull away even further. Well deserved, you know, he, he, he deserved that touchdown, you know, he did all that running, he got himself that close, it was only right that he finished it and punched it in, great run by Seelig, look at that patience, look at that power. You know, he had his offense as well, just to continue to push him in. You're seeing it from another angle. Look at the blocking going in from Daniel Akin Kunmi, who's got all those scholarships right in front of him and getting him a path into the end zone. We'll hear about Daniel's decision and which one of those 30-plus offers he's got from different schools, including some big Div 1 schools. We'll hear about that on Wednesday. I think he's due to make a final decision on that as the extra point goes through from Quinn. Yeah, like Kyle, it's just, yeah, it's, it's just great, man. You know, especially Daniel being from the UK, you know, he only started playing the game, you know, two years ago, one year, like two Legal years ago this year. On the defence, had a man lined up directly over the centre. That penalty is declined. The try is good. You know, Daniel only playing, you know, two years now, and, you know, for him to be able to receive that many scholarship offers, you know, it's just a great testament, you know, to the coaches, the academy, the programme, and it just shows, you know, that people from the UK can really play American football. He just saw the kind of devastating blocking that Akin Kunmi can provide you on the touchdown run, just clearing a path for his runner to go in, Seelig. And that's why they want him. Yo, they're lining up over the center. They're just going to get lined up here with Erasmus. But, you know, even on that play, the penalty was again was against the defense, and the academy just, are just declining him now. I mean, there's so many penalties racked up against Erasmus Hall. I feel like in a game like this, you know, when, when the academy are going, they're going, you know, 28 nil, you know, they just want to close this game out and just finish it. Now that is a rare mistake from Quinn as he uh, takes a bounce out of bounds. So Erasmus Hall will get the option on whether they want NFL Academy to re-kick or just bring the ball out to the 30 yard line. See what they decide here. But do you feel like the NFL Academy have really bullied the, you know, these guys? We know that they're coming over from a high school. They're all based within New York. It's a state school. It's a smaller group of athletes. But you know, the feeling coming in was they would match up really well against the NFL Academy. And you know, barring the mistakes and the issues and the penalties that they've had, it feels like they would have done if they were able to kind of get their game going. And of course, there's time left for them to show us what they can do, but it's been a one-sided affair. Definitely, Carl, you know, it, it has been a one-sided affair in my Fouls opinion against as well. both teams. Hasn't really been, Legal you know, procedure, kick off out of bounds, kicking team, personal foul, legal block below the waist, gets number 14, return team, those live ball penalties offset, or re-kick. Re Sorry to Shane, yeah, continue, those penalties offset. Yeah, it hasn't really been their best, you know, front foot for Erasmus Hall, you know, but I feel like the academy, they're, they're just, they're running on fumes based off that IMG game, and, you know, they're just really showing what they can do. So, you know, you never know, as you said, you know, there's still time left on the clock for us to see a little bit more from them, but, yeah, I think NFL Academy are pretty comfortable. Here they come again. Been impressive tonight. They've looked organisationally really strong. You know, all teams make mistakes, you know, all teams get a certain amount of penalties, but they certainly haven't been an over-penalised team in the way Erasmus Hall have been tonight. And I feel like we've just not seen the best of Erasmus Hall as yet because of these mistakes and penalties that they've been having. But, you know, NFL Academy also have been putting them under a huge amount of pressure the whole game as the kick gets underway and Quinn drives it low and difficult to handle. Now backed up with some great moves on the sideline, beats the first man but can't beat the second. Keenan Grant's trying to make something happen, but Quinn with a really effective squeak kick. 
Don't know if that was tactical, but that was a great kick, you know. Those kicks, especially when you drill it quite low, it can be quite hard, you know, to return, especially for, you know, the returner. So, you know, great, great, you know, great play by NFL Academy, you know, to kind of push them back even further in their own end zone. Here's that replay, just kicks it into space. Keenan Grant, look at that move. That's an ankle breaker. But it's a nice tackle. Kamal Yorgil comes in, the defensive back, to make the tackle. And Keenan getting some treatment now on the sideline after that. So this NFL Academy, now this is the last of the three of their American games. They played that game against Bonner and Prendy in Donegal in Ireland. It was the first one they come out with a loss. Um, and then new head coach comes in back in July. They come in and they get the win against IMG, which everyone thought IMG were going to come back and, you know, win. I think that, that was the feeling, right, to Shane? It was like IMG going to come in and win again. And tonight... 28 nothing up against Erasmus Hall as we get back to the live action. I'll come back to you on that. Handoff. And this is going to get maybe a yard. They're keeping Kendu Brown in. Yeah, I mean, speak to the expectations of this team coming into this, this series of three games. I mean, you know, the NFL Academy, as, as we know, you know, the best team in Europe and, you know, team wasn't satisfied just being the best team in Europe. You know, we wanted to expand and, you know, really take on that, you know, American opposition, you know, so the NFL Academy knew that, you know, this was a chance for them to show what the program was about, what they can really do. And, you know, as we can see, they're proving it. Second and nine, Brown rolls to his right. Lots of time, takes a step up into the pocket and has a man, but it's picked. Underthrown ball. And that's Arthur Debochi. Hurdles a man and how about at the five? Wow, Debochi with the pick and then the spectacular return. That's what we've been waiting for. That's why he has all those offers that he has, you know, that sort of athleticism, you know, being able to track the ball and just, just put on a show right there. That's what we've been waiting for. The side and are hyped after that one. Wow, Brown had a shot at that, but just underthrows it. You'll see it here on the replays. Man is open, but he just underthrows him. And Debochi, look at this hurdle. Wow. They love that here at Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Crowd going mad for Debochi's acrobatics after the interception. Putting on a show. Putting on a show. That's a, that's a highlight right there. That's a great highlight right there for, for Arthur, man. And after all that, I need to take a breath, but he gets the NFL Academy down at the Erasmus Hall seven-yard line as Winters goes in motion, but they'll pitch this to Brewer. Now it's a trick play, he's looking for Winter. Oh, and Winter has to turn into the defensive back, almost picked off. Flag down as well. Man down in the end zone, an Erasmus Hall player. All sorts of action going on. That's an interesting one, Carl. We haven't seen that play today or in the last game, so NFL Academy clearly getting a little bit more creative with plays as well. Saw it from Winter last time they played IMG on that touchdown. His second touchdown, Winter rolled out and looked like he wanted to throw it. Looked like the same play, only this time it was Brewer that was doing the throwing, trying to get Winter in the end zone. Erasmus Hall defend it well. And as they're just checking on that Erasmus Hall player, Arthur Debochi with the interception. And did you get a chance to play with him, or did you did you kind of have to end your tenure with the NFL Academy and become the alumni before you before Arthur came in? Yeah, didn't get to play with Arthur um, when I finished, you know. But I, I got to play with um, a close friend of his, um, Shavaro. Shavaro is a really really close friend. Also came from Amsterdam as well, you know. And you know, Shiv definitely said that Arthur, you know, he's a great player and, you know, he's definitely living up to that expectation. Shavaro will number one as well. Number seven on the offence, lined up on the line of scrimmage and then went in motion. It's a five-yard penalty, replay first down. All right, so the break goes against uh, NFL Academy and Erasmus Hall will, will get some yards back off them. It's winter in motion, number seven. You're watching him shuffle down the line of scrimmage and that is an illegal motion as he wasn't on the line of scrimmage at the point the ball was snapped. As the play develops, Brewer can't get it to him. 
but the penalty will wipe it off anyway. So it's going to bring up first and goal, but this time from the 12. So they have to score. Brewer. Good defending. Just to pick up of three on first down. Brewer's doing everything in this game. He's running, he's throwing. You know, what can't the running backs do? What can't the NFL Academy do so far in this offense? If you've just joined us and you're looking at the score, it's not a mistake. The NFL Academy 28 nothing up against Erasmus Hall. We know lots of you are joining us from the United States and you're so welcome to watch the stream. It's great to have you with us as uh, the NFL Academy driving for their fifth touchdown. Now two touchdowns from Winter. Touchdown to Ben Lax. And a, a touchdown on the ground to Selig. As the clock ticks down on this Q3 and just the one score. Time's expired in the third quarter. Just that one score in Q3. And again, it comes from NFL Academy. And as I say, that's not a mistake. 28 nothing up. Wow. NFL Academy still piling on the pressure. A lot of pressure, Carl, man, a lot of pressure, you know, like who would have thought, you know, we knew it was going to be an intense game, you know, but we didn't know that it was going to be a 28-0. Let's have a look at that touchdown in Q3. Hand off to Seelig. Got the blocking from Akinkunmi, who helps Seelig <laughs> get into the end zone. The blocking's been great on the offensive line, hasn't he? And even though Selig's hit about two yards in the backfield, just driving his legs, only five foot six, 180 pounds, but the power. And this is the acrobatics of Arthur Debochi on the interception. Look at that hurdle. There it is. Whoop. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. Back to the live stream. Academy looking for their fifth score. The Erasmus all trying to rip the ball out. Selig's having none of it. You were playing at running back for all those years at NFL Academy. Are you impressed by Selig and Brewer tonight, what they've been able to do? They're doing a great job, man. Honestly, you know, like nothing more I could say. You know, they're running hard. They, you know, they're securing the ball, there's been no drops, they're getting involved in the pass game, blocking's been good as well, you know, they're, they're, they're putting on the show, you know, really, really proud of, you know, the generation of running backs that are growing up, especially in the NFL Academy and, you know, seeing, you know, what they're doing for this game. Clock continues to tick at the beginning of this Q4, but the Academy want to stop it there at 11-11. Time out by the NFL Academy. First of the second half at 11 11. Now, that last game where they played IMG obviously didn't have a great chance to celebrate that one, but you know, we're still a lot of time left in Q4. But you have to feel like coming back from four scores, it looks right now like NFL Academy are going to come away with a win. They get a chance to celebrate properly, right? They don't have another team coming up for a while now. Definitely, you know, they, you know, the job's not done yet. They still have to finish through, you know, but definitely after this game, they'll get the chance to kind of reflect, celebrate, enjoy themselves, and, you know, just kind of appreciate, you know, the harbour that they've put in, especially, you know, having a game on Friday and, you know, the quick turnaround of having a game on Tuesday, you know, bodies were definitely sore, and, you know, that was a tough game, you know, but being able to come out here and put on a show that they're putting on, they, they, they look fresh, they look ready to go, you know, they look like they didn't play a game on Friday. So many alumni in this team as well. So many great, hi, welcome back to the booth. So many great alumni um, that this team have now got going. And I know it's the aspiration that the NFL Academy over the next few years put 150 players into the NFL. You know, there's not, not just Div 1 schools, but actually beginning to really make an impact on the NFL. And I know that's a long-term goal. And we'll come back to talk about that a little bit after these plays. So Troni will roll and he will find yet another man in the end zone. That one is caught by Matthew Okanadi, six foot two receiver from England. 
and he gets on the board. So now they're beginning to get touchdowns to other players that we've not seen before. And he just ran a really great route, made himself available to the quarterback, trying to put it on the money. That's what happens sometimes. Here's the replay, you know. Winter comes over with the motion. Troni has time. He's looking, he's looking. Turns back over, throws it to an open man, you know. And that's how it is when the defense, you know, they go for the guy that's been catching the majority of the touchdowns. And then those other wide receivers that, you know, may not have been, you know, the main targets, they get open and they score. So Matthew Okanadi on the board. Now a five-score lead for the NFL Academy as Quinn comes in again to kick the extra point. He's not missed one yet tonight as the Irishman kicked really well and does it again. Only to avoid commentator's curse. It was always when you say something like that, I'll kick it wide, but no, he doesn't. I was on him. I was going to say, Carl, I hope you didn't jinx him, but no. No, no, I should always keep my mouth shut before I say anything on the kick. He finished it. He finished it through. Carl, what, what, what's your thoughts on this? Like, did, is this what you expected? Did you expect it to be, you know, a game like this, or did you expect it to be a lot closer? I don't think anyone did. Did they come in here? Certainly, I, I didn't think it was good. I thought it'd be a closer game than this, and I still feel like Erasmus Hall have not given us an opportunity really to see what they can do when they're firing on sort all cylinders when they get their organization right. But you know, you can't take anything away from the NFL Academy. And we talked about some of those scholarship players and you know some of them. I mean, talk to some of that in terms of, you know, where these guys have gone and what impact they're making in the States. Like we have Peter Clark, you know, Peter Clark scored his first NFL Academy touchdown, you know, for Temple University that he's playing for at the moment, you know, and just that in itself is a big highlight for the NFL Academy, you know, having players that used to be here, you know, playing with us, dominating out in the States and you know that that's a touchdown first of many for him you know we have Emmanuel Ikoye you know that's over there in Tennessee University enjoying himself you know even just his story in itself is you know it's just so powerful you know we have Co um, Kofi Taylor Barrett you know that's at Colorado you know we have so many alumni that are yeah as the kicks muffed I'll come straight back to you muffed kick and then great coverage and who's down there making the tackle Looks like Seb, Seb Harris. Harris. Touchdown scorer making a play on special teams. Selfless. Outside of the quarterbacks, I suppose, I guess, you know, everyone's going to play special teams as we watch the replay of the kick. Hey, Carl, it's not, all, it's not all about catching balls, you know. Special teams are also, you know, crucial as well. Look at him making the play there, you know, being there in time, getting low and just making that tackle. It's good technique, sir. He can celebrate, he can celebrate. And I guess it's, you're making tackles on special teams as well, talking about moving on to Div 1 schools. You're adding value to your overall offer, right? If they can see you're making special teams plays as well. 100%. You know, coaches always look for players that can, you know, do more in, you know, than just one position. If you can play, you know, wide receiver and DB, it adds to your worth. Of, you know, not just being just one sole position. It can be used in multiple different ways. Rasmus Hall trying to restore some pride to this outfit. But on first down... It's a nice tackle coming in. No yards gained on that one. Or it's the play of number 60. Defensive lineman just beats his man to the right, then to the left. and Great speed. He wasn't having any of that. NFL Academy are really, really showing their dominance on defense right now. Collins Abaya, you're looking at him there. Defensive lineman, 6'3", 232. Makes a great play. This one is caught. That's going to be close to first down. They get the ball to Judah Wright. Ian Williams is now the quarterback for Erasmus Hall. As they continue to rotate in their quarterbacks. throw to the flat over the head trying to get the ball to Lyric Samuel yeah tell us a bit more about those uh, other players at uh, the NFL Academy ascending to Div 1 schools 
Yeah, like as, as I was saying, you know, we have a lot of players over there right now currently playing Division One football. You know, we have Sadie Traore, that's currently at Mississippi State. You know, we have Darren Agu, that's currently at Vanderbilt University. Freddie Pellin, you know, that's at University of Hawaii. You know, so there's, there's a lot of players out there now that, you know, clearly show that they can play American football over there in the States and, you know, are doing big, big things. Those numbers will continue to grow as Williams tries to get away from the NFL Academy pass rush, but goes down. It's not going to count as a sack, I don't think. He did enough to get just over the line of scrimmage. But it's been a miserable day here for the Erasmus Hall Dutchman. Just can't seem to get anything going. Tried three different quarterbacks now as well. I was going to say, Carl, you know, it can be quite hard as well, you know, rotating in different quarterbacks. You know, they, they're getting into the game. They have, they're not warm yet. You know, they need to get themselves acclimatized with the team. You know, so it's, it's quite difficult for them as well to get adjusted. Williams will complete this one. That's a nice turn outside, and he will pick up the first down for his bumped out of bounds. So that's a nice play. Marquis Lawton showing what he can do when there isn't a flag down and they get the right number of players on the field. QB got that ball out quite quickly. Great, make, great by number three by making the player miss. Just going out of bounds right there. Ian Williams is a sophomore. Gets his first completion on the board. Moves the chains. Nice from Erasmus Hall on that play. First and ten at their 40. Complete again. That will pick up again a four. That one goes to Judah Wright. It's just great defense car by the NFL Academy. You know, they're, they're just always there. You know, as soon as a wide receiver catches the ball, someone gets the ball, they're just there and just in time just to always be there. They rally well to the ball, don't they? Both these teams, to be fair, rally well to the ball. We've seen it from... Erasmus Hall as well. This time they go over the top and it's picked. Going down the sideline. Another great academy play. Max Bartholomew, the German defensive back, picks it off. And they're playing a little bit of zone. And that time, Williams just tried to throw it over the top. But Bartholomew right there to make the play on defense. Tough play by Rasmus Hall. Tough, tough play, you know. Defense makes plays and, you know, he was there. Pick was open. He took it. Now NFL Academy offense will run again. They've got an injured NFL Academy player down. Steve Hagen's gone immediately over to uh, check that he's okay. Maybe the defensive back that made the interception Max Bartholomew you can see the NFL Academy players you know Paul Burrow we've got Seeley a couple of the Germans you know putting up their helmets you know really really showing you know their country representing Germany we love it we love their we love the energy we love the celebrations from them and as they as they as they deserve to be they can celebrate you know they're winning this game they've put on a good game so far seven minutes to go So Bartholomew will get up on his feet. He is your interception, you know, the player that made the interception. You can see him quite significant pain there. And look at the Loughborough students, uh, Loughborough physios helping him off the field, obviously supported so much by Loughborough. Here's the interception, and the injury is going to occur at the end of the play as he gets bumped out of bounds, twisted down, and that knee does bend back. His right knee kind of bent underneath him, didn't he? So um, there he is smiling though. He's still happy he got the interception. Great job, Max Bartholomew. So we hope that's not a serious injury, but there's definitely smiles down here as well. Definitely, you know, I mean, what a way to come off, you know, getting an interception for your team and, you know, now your offense can come on and, you know, try to try get a score for you. So back on the field. And back to the flags. Back to the flags, Carl. Offense number 78. Five-yard penalty. Replay first down. Academy made a swap at quarterback. Jules Baron, the Belgian, comes in. Six foot two, over 200 pounds. And he's going to hand this one off to a new running back as well. Joey Williams comes in. 
So a new backfield, giving these players an opportunity to get some reps in in a big stadium, Tottenham Hotspur ground, and rotate players in. And, you know, it wasn't long ago that Troni was banging, backing up Sam Fenton and he would come in at the end of games and now look at him throwing for four touchdowns and in comes Jules Boren who want to emulate and walk in Troni's footsteps, right? Literally, Kai, that's what it's all about, you know. It's all about using, you know, those NFL Academy alumni, you know, to... Oh, ball's gone back. Yeah, nothing that Boron could do on that one. Just has to dive on it, takes a, a massive loss. But that, you know, these are, these are the learning experiences you have, you know, being able to keep your head uh, just uh, not clear if it was the snap or the quarterback, just didn't get that right, but it looked like Boron was not expecting the ball to be snapped at the time it was. So great to see so many people down here. I know so many of you have come to support Dutchman football and it's not gone your way, but Boy, it's been great having you here and love to welcome you back. Baron, oh, another poor snap. And Baron cannot get to this one and it will be recovered by Raz. Oh, the ball's still going around. And it's Tietz that picks it up. Now flags come in. Well, wow, it's like the Keystone Cops back there. What a crazy play that just happened there. What, what happened over there, Cal? Ah, oh, Tietz is grinning himself. He's not quite sure what happened. Clearly started with a botched snap, but no one could get the hand. It was like a bar of soap. <laughs> QB tried to go on it, ball popped out again. Dominic picked up the ball and started running down the field. That old line, get ready, that old line, get ready, that old line, get ready. Legal block in the back, offense number 12. That penalty's been declined, result of the play brings up, fourth down. So when I see plays like that, I'm so grateful for the referees that we don't have to sort it all out. That's what they're there for, Carter. They're there to officiate. There we can see the ball popped out. Here's the replay. The ball's under there somewhere, and it just refuses to go into anyone's hands until Tietz picks it up. So the academy... Time out, called by Rasmus Hall. They're first of the second half. At 6 3 3. After all that excitement, it's going to be fourth down. And Erasmus Hall will take a timeout, I guess, to think about whether they want to do anything on this punt. Maybe, maybe look to block it, make something happen on special teams. Hasn't gone their way tonight, but you know, these American teams, they never quit. There's just there's no quit in them, and you know that they're going to, they're going to just keep coming until that whistle blows. Here's a reverse angle on that fumble. You can see your boots go in, hands go in, and it's kicked again. <laughs> Finally, Tietz gets hold of it and says, oh, I've had enough of this. I'll try and run it back. This is why we love the game. You know, you never know what's going to happen. Fourth down. Let's see what the NFL Academy. Yeah, that snap's come out low there. The whistle's blown it dead anyway. It was a beautiful kick by Quinn, I think. To be honest, he thought, I'll just have a quick rehearsal before the real thing. <laughs> only right, only right. He deserves it. Ball was snapped prior to the timeout being declared over. We'll replay fourth down. So no foul on that. There was still time on the timeout, so uh, Academy just going a little bit early. The ball's still on the 37. Queen had a good boot on his rehearsal. We'll see what he does here. And a decent boot on the second as well. Now, will they try and return? Oh, it's hit an academy player, but... Oh, got a bit lucky there. Hit an academy player on the back of the leg, but... Ball, dead ball, and... Uh, no harm on that one. So Erasmus Hall will take over. So we've got 6.22 left in this. Still time for Erasmus to get something together, do you think, to shame? 
I think I think there's still time. You know, football is a game where you never know what's going to happen. You know, there's, as long as there's time on the clock, there's still time for you know something to happen. You know, but as we said, you know, I don't think we've seen the best of them so far. You know, but they have six minutes on the clock left. So, you know, right now they're just praying for playing for pride and you know let's let's see what they can do if they can make something happen you know at least they can go home with you know some takeaways from the game and you know no you know what we could have did this better but i, I really feel like this is a, a good rivalry that's you know starting to happen you know with the nfl academy and rasmus hall similar to img you know ing won last year nfl academy came and won this year so you know it's good to kind of get that american opposition going with the nfl academy and getting more teams in the mix so Erasmus Hall, can they restore some pride and get something going on this offense? Winter still in, and that's a kind of drilled that ball in almost like a baseball player to his receiver. Had to have some juice on that one. William Justice, the wide receiver, brings it in on the slant for a pickup of six. Drills that between two defenders. Nice catch. Second and four. For Erasmus Hall. Ian Williams up, balls out, and uh, yeah, it was knocked out, I think, by a defensive lineman. And a nice play. But uh, Williams has the wherewithal to jump on it. Here's the replay looking, and it's Arthur, I think. No, it's not Arthur, it's that second man coming in. We've called it before he's made a couple of good plays tonight that was Collins Abaya who knocks it out third and nine now for Erasmus Hall Looked like a neutral zone infraction from the defense on that time yeah full start just a little just a little bit more patience just a little bit more patience Carl same same thing that we're talking about with those penalties you know just Later on in the game, you know, those are the things that really matter. Offside, defense number 68, five yard penalty, replay third down. Penalty on Nana Agmang on that one. So make third down a little easier for Erasmus Hall, third and three. Sack that time going in. They bring pressure from the defensive back on third down. Farrell Harwood, the linebacker. He wasn't having any of that right there. He wasn't having any of it. He just wanted that, that QB to go down. Yeah, and they've, they've got to the QB a number of times tonight. Ian Williams can't do anything on third down with that sort of pressure in his face. Fourth down, Erasmus will look to punt again. Decent kick into space. It will take a bounce, but no return, so... It will just be down at the 25-yard line. Desmond Allen downs it. The running back. Ball goes back to NFL Academy. One of the big highlights for me was um, Arthur Debochi, and we spoke to you ab ab about him before in terms of the interception in the hurdle. And he had a really successful trip to Atlanta, didn't he? Um, really getting up, picking up some offers. Tell us about it. Yeah, definitely, you know, I don't know if you've seen Carl, you know, but there was a video of when, you know, Arthur went to Clemson, you know, he, he just dominated, he dominated, you know, the Clemson players were out there as well, you know, motivating him, encouraging him, you know, he managed to pick up his first offer from Florida A&M, you know, he picked up an offer from Alabama State University, you know, like, he's, he's really dominating, you know, really putting it home for, you know, the Netherlands. NFL Academy with a run on first down. Erasmus defend that well. New running back in again for the academy. Isaac Fuller. Get some reps under the lights of Tottenham. Still Juice Baron in at quarterback. 
it's always good, Carl, you know, seeing, you know, the other the other players as well getting an opportunity, especially, you know, later on in the game, you know, giving them an opportunity to get some film and, you know, show what they can do. Run up the middle, good strong defending that time from Erasmus Hall. No gains for Isaac Fuller. When you get an offer and you're still playing for the academy, when do you need to make the decision about which school do you go to? Can you wait until your tenure is sort of over? And you're, or, or is there pressure for you to make a decision sooner than that? It really it just depends on you as a player, you know, depending on, you know, how many years you have, you know. So when Daniel got his offers, he got his offers in his first year, you know. So he had two years left to really decide, all right, cool, this is where I want to go. If you feel like you have the offers, obviously you know that you have the ability, but you want more time to develop and, you know, give yourself a better chance when you're out there, you can wait. Nice throw and catch. Baron gets the ball to Jason Stontgerath, German wide receiver. Makes a reception for a first down. Here's the replay. Tackle made from Ellis Johnson. But it's going to move the sticks for the NFL Academy. We've talked about it before, but I want to talk about that positional element that comes into, you know, the types of players that are winning those scholarships into Div 1 schools. Some nice running off the left-hand side. Good blocking again there from Daniel Akinkunmi. Doesn't matter who they put in, he's going to make these big holes for you, right, from that left guard position. Two-minute warning at two minutes exactly. Yeah, I mean, your your particular position was running back. It's so challenging to get to win scholarship if you're a certain position. So if you're an offensive lineman, defensive lineman, defending player, you maybe got more of an opportunity. Those skill positions like quarterback, wide receiver, running back, even more competitive, aren't they? Talked a bit, a bit about that. So competitive, Carl. You know, like obviously, when you think about America, you know, Rasmus Hall being an example, there's so many guys that are in America that, you know, play running back, that play run, um, wide receiver, that you know they're so fast they're so strong you know so it's really really hard to separate yourself not impossible of course you know but because there's so many of them coaches naturally will drift towards the ones in america instead of those in the uk second and three baron hands this one off again nice cutback close to the sticks more yards for isaac fuller jack troney this is only his second start for the NFL Academy, you know, the starting call about it. He missed the game in Dublin against Bonner and Prendy. And he looks so much more mature than he did, you know, when I saw him a year ago play in games, he was backing up Sam Fenton. But he's just come on in leaps and bounds. I mean, speak to his talent and uh, maturity at this age. I think he's just been playing amazing, you know. I mean, he had a great, great role model, great example, you know, with Sam Fenton, you know, being, you know, his starting quarterback and, you know, just being able to learn and absorb as much as, you know, he did from Sam, you know, being able to kind of take that through. number two, five-yard penalty, replay third down. So an offside coming in for the NFL Academy as they swap in a quarterback. Again, so Bobby Bridges now, the fourth quarterback we've seen for the NFL Academy. And uh, he gets a chance to play under the lights. Uh, it's just so fantastic to see all these players rotating in and getting, getting some snaps in this atmosphere. And that's what it's all about, Kai. You know, it's about giving these players the opportunity to get some film. And, you know, once, you know, especially in situations where, you know, the veterans and, you know, the starters come out, now is the time for those that are lower down the depth, the, the, the depth chart to give themselves an opportunity to say, you know what, I can actually play too. Because one day, just like Jack, you know, it's going to be their time to step up. It's a good defending that time from Erasmus Hall. Xavier Hughes, defensive lineman, sophomore, comes in to make the tackle. Excited about getting that on his highlight reel. Got a new running back as well, Joey Williams coming in as well, getting some reps in that running back as well. Clock's ticking down under a minute to go here. What's next for you? I've enjoyed it so much being up here with you, Tashane. And what's next for you on uh, your amazing journey? 
you know, we just, I, I just love the game, Kyle, you know, I just love the game, love playing, you know, still playing, you know, just just love being a part of the game and, you know, giving young ones the opportunity to be involved and, you know, have the same experience that I had, you know, so just can't wait to continue to grow, you know, obviously I'm, I'm doing things as well with Under Armour, so just seeing where that continues to lead me. Beautiful punt from Quinn, it will be taken at the 11. Oh, what a blistering hit that comes in to take the runner down. Guess who? Arthur. Yeah, he's been unbelievable tonight. Arthur Debochi with the big boom. Not only can he get the interception, we'll see it here. He's the gunner. He actually gets blocked in the back, not called. And he says, have some of that. Well, nice football for you. Steve Hagen, I mean, how happy is he going to be tonight with his team's performance? Because I spoke to him before the game and he was like, Carl, this team, they've got American speed, evidently that's different to UK speed, American speed. So, you know, he, he didn't take it lightly at all. He hardly had any sleep, said he didn't know what time of day it was. You know, he'd been working so hard on the game. But uh, how happy and how prideful is he going to be on the, in his team? Oh, definitely. He's going to be so proud, you know. Him just coming in as well, you know, as a new head coach, uh, he's definitely going to be proud, you know. And, yeah, like he's, he's definitely done a great job, you know, bringing the team to where it is as well, you know, and, you know, helping them get the opportunity to play against these teams. Ticking down now. Rasmus Hall will have the ball for these last few seconds. Last player of the game is going to be a QB keeper up the left-hand side. And with some good running. That is going to bring the game to an end. So, the cheers go up for the NFL Academy as the clock ticks down here. Erasmus Hall, zero. Time NFL Academy, 35. 35. Who, who would have thought it, you know? But great game, great energy. You know, the NFL Academy played really, really well, you know, and it was good to see, you know. Well done to Erasmus Hall, as we said, you know. Definitely could have seen a little bit more from them. We wanted to see a little bit more from them, but hey, they came out, they played, and, you know, as we said, we look, to, look forward to seeing this rivalry coming forward for the years to come. Absolutely, and what an absolute pleasure and a gift it's been to do the commentary with you at Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. And despite it not being a competitive game, it's been so enjoyable to watch these players on both sides of the ball really come and ball out and make a big difference to them and their academies and their school. And, you know, get all that experience and character development. It's just been fantastic, hasn't it? So amazing, Kyle. Like, honestly, thank you for you know for having me. Thank you for you know enjoying a, a great win for the NFL Academy with me. You know, two two wins as we, as we're calling this the fourth unofficial game. You know, London game so far in a beautiful stadium. And yeah, I hope everyone at home enjoyed themselves. They enjoyed this game and can't wait to see more games come in the future. Of course, that fourth NFL Academy game is coming up this weekend. Tennessee Titans will take on the Baltimore Ravens on this very turf. And this place will have 62, 63,000 people in it cheering on those NFL teams. And what a beautiful stadium it is. Uh, but for tonight, it's been longed to the NFL Academy. They came in here and they have dealt with this like it was a home ground. There's been no signs of, you know, it being a, a too big a venue for them. There's been no signs that they've been overwhelmed at all. They've come in and they've performed. And they've performed, not just performed, but they've been outstanding. 35 nothing, And so you feel that this organisation, this team of young athletes, they just continue to grow to show. Just going to continue to grow, Kyle. And, you know, like you, you can already hear the energy and, you know, the excitement from the fans down there. Man. It's, it's been such a great game. You know, the guys are going to be buzzing. And as we said earlier, they can really finally properly celebrate, you know, the two wins that they had before. So great game, man. Such a great game. If you did come down to support your team and you're watching the replay back on NFL UK, then... Uh, we salute you. Thank you so much for coming down to support these young men, these 16 to 19 year olds on their journey to uh, gain uh, a Div 1 scholarship, Div 2 scholarships, play in America, play in the UK, but more importantly, continue to develop their character and themselves as young men. Let's look at some highlights from that first, from that second half. So this was early on with that touchdown. Back to the first half. This was Brian Winter. Scoring in the back of the end zone, the first score that NFL Academy put on the board. Yeah. See, 
Yeah, just drilled it in the back of the end zone, didn't need to shame. Great touchdown by Brian Winter, man. Just easy touchdown, as we said, just always open. Just always open, always making plays. Here's the fumble, and uh, Erasmus Hall, you have to say, had all sorts of issues, and one of them was uh, that, that fumble in that um, period of time where they just couldn't keep hold of the ball. Second touchdown right here. As we, you know, we love this one year where Troni was just looking out, putting his receiver in the right place, and then Winter just makes a great catch, you know, keeping both feet in bounds and, you know, just, just doing what he does. Great receivers make quarterbacks look great, don't they? It was almost like Winter made Troni right on that because he just kept moving with Troni. Spectacular catch from Winter. Still got to get some lessons on how to spin that ball like that. Troni again. This time, Ben Lax in the back of the end zone. He's ben Winter, Brian Winter was used as a bit of a decoy on that. All eyes on him and Lax in the back of the end zone. Just, just again, just busted coverage, you know. Just Ben Lax just wide open in the end zone. You know, he shouldn't have that much space. They both of them celebrate the two touchdown scorers at that point. 21-0, they go in at the half. Selig setting himself up with some great running at the beginning of Q3. His knee goes down just a little bit short. So uh, coach Steve Hagen says, hey, we'll just give you the ball again, have another go. Literally, you know, he, he deserved it. You know, he did all that running to, to get himself, to get the team there and, you know, just what a way to finish off you know, with a great push by Daniel just to help him get into the end zone. Selig takes it in for the academy's fourth touchdown. And then we had not just plays on offense, but plays on defense. This was Arthur Debochi with great position, picks the ball off and then the return. And then my highlight of the day, there he goes. Hurdling down the field. Straight hurdle, out of bounds. You know, what a great way to get the offense into great field position. And, you know, just, just look at it. Just look at the athleticism, you know, running down, evading people, straight hurdle over. Great play. That brought the crowd to life even more than they were already. Followed it up, did the academy. Is any great offense will. With the fifth touchdown. And this one went to Matthew Okanadi. Did a great job just making himself available to his quarterback. And he gets on the board. He just ran his route, found space in the end zone, just stood there, pulled the ball, easy touchdown again. And a word about that offensive line, just no one close to Troni on that. Just couldn't get the pressure. Erasmus Hall tried to get back into it, but it was Bartholomew that made this interception. And that was all she wrote from up here. Final score from the booth, 35 NFL Academy, zero to Erasmus Hall. Thank you so much for joining me in the booth. The mighty, inspiring to Shane Boyce. If you don't follow him on socials, follow him. I love the stuff he does. It's been so great to have you here, buddy. Thank you, Carl. Much appreciated, man. Love what you do. We all love what you do, man. Keep it up and, you know, let's, let's, let's go down and celebrate with these, these NFL Academy guys. I'm with you. Let's throw down to John Jackson and Phoebe Schechter. Well, look, I, I feel, Carl, that we should be giving you a shout out for social media. You know, we've been checking out Destroying. We spoke to him earlier. 2.4 million followers on Instagram. Carl Walkinshaw, just search him and maybe we'll get him up to 60, <laughs> maybe 70 followers by the end of the night. There Phoebe. we go. <laughs> but as much as we joke about Carl's social media, I mean, at halftime, we were impressed. At the end of the game, we're blown away, right? Absolutely. I mean, you guys could hopefully hear and experience this atmosphere right now. I mean, the way that the players just came over here saying hi to friends and family who have just supported, but an absolutely dominant win from the academy. I mean, leading into the second half, three touchdowns up. It was unbelievable. And now a well-deserved win. And, and who doesn't need a Gatorade bath on <laughs> Coach Steve? <laughs> yeah, it's getting a little bit uh, cold here as well. So that might be quite refreshing, I would yeah. imagine, as, uh, as the cold night comes in here in October in the UK. We've just seen that uh, Lamont Winston uh, being thrown around and celebrated with. You know, for those guys out there, this is an a momentous occasion to play here at this stadium. But to 
you know, to, to put up a shot like that, 35 to nothing against a team from Brooklyn who are not just any team from Brooklyn, but, you know, five-time champion under their head coach at the moment, that, that's a pretty big deal. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. And you have to look at it, right, as complementary football. And all three sides of the ball stepped up today. Offense, defense, special teams. You had some incredible tackles being made down on special teams. Offense, big shout out to Brian Winter, who was unbelievable, getting those three touchdowns in, giving the team a chance. And then defensively, I mean, they really didn't give Erasmus Hall much of a, an option there on defense. That defensive line getting after it. So again, overall great team win here. Yeah, towards the end there, Erasmus Hall were getting a little bit sloppy, but let's face it, it's a tough game for them, and it's very disheartening to come all this way, you know, to be really pumped for this game, and then, you know, to, to have it go against you like that. But still, despite the result, you know, a great experience in their learning curve as well, coming over here, playing the NFL Academy, and just being out here on the field at Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Yeah, a huge shout out to Erasmus Hall and what they were able to do. I mean, flying out here, they were doing community days, they really absorbed the entire culture of being here in the UK and then the celebration of being out here on the field Tottenham Hotspur Stadium where we've just had Josh Allen on the Bills and Trevor Lawrence and this weekend coming up you're going to have Lamar Jackson out here it is a absolute honor to see these athletes out here and hey one day we hope to see some of them actually playing in the NFL hopefully here in the yeah. home of the NFL in the UK also putting yourself in the shot window we were talking about Brian Winter at half time you know getting those two touchdowns and I can't even remember who we were standing with but it was certainly one of our guests we've had today who have played in the NFL and they were like wow he is a player and, and that's what you get now because you, people aren't just watching this here in the stadium they're not watching it online at home but you know people who would be potentially going to like, make offers are, are watching this to see what the NFL Academy have got. Yeah, and what's so great, the NFL Academy has athletes from all around the world coming together, right? We've got kids from Germany, you've got kids uh, from Nigeria over here, and, and you know, through OC Manuri's NFL Africa program, five of, the, five of the athletes out here doing that. So it is a, it is a full team win, and it's been a, a, it's been a great opportunity to have Coach Steve Hagan, who's about to join us, taking over the NFL Academy uh, only as of recently. Yes, yeah, so Steve, I mean, on Friday, we were impressed with the result there. NFL Academy beating American opposition for the first time. How are you feeling today? Oh, this is super fun for our kids. Did you see that? I mean, that's just oh my so gosh. fun. They just, I just want them to have a great time, you know, and uh, I like to end the games when I'm soaking wet. That's fun. I was going to say, we love to watch it. I know the kids absolutely look forward to doing that to you, I'll be <laughs> honest. But you know what? I had the absolute pleasure of, of seeing you guys playing out in Ireland only a couple months ago and seeing where you are now. What do you think have been some of the biggest keys from then to the absolute change I've seen in the team? Here? Our whole thing is eliminate average, and that's what we try and do love every it. day. And when we eliminate average, good things happen. If I let average seep in, then bad things happen. So we just, they know it. They know how I am. They know who they are. And I just say, we don't, if we don't eliminate average, we'll look average. And we looked average against Dublin, and I don't like it. And they don't either now. Well, we can see your players currently in the shot, just lying down here, looking up at, <laughs> looking up the stars. Can we see the stars in London tonight? Probably not. You no, know, this is a great venue, isn't it? This oh, is an awesome gosh. stadium. And we're just blessed to be part of the NFL Academy and do this over and over. And we'll play anybody, anywhere, anytime, because that's what we got to do. Ooh, I like that. And I think that's what's so huge. We won't right? play the Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Depends on which one you get. But uh, you know what's so great is, is going back to what you said in terms of just getting these athletes game experience, getting them on film, being able to learn and, and study from that. I mean, what your coaching staff has done has, has been incredible in pairing with Loughborough University. I mean, how have you found that opportunity being there in that facility? It's good. It's it's been a it's been a great experience for us. You know, it it everything comes with its challenges, but we just no excuses, no explanations, and we just roll. And and that's what I try and teach my guys. You know, no excuses, no explanations. I don't care what it looks like. Do our job and do it better than we've ever done it before. You know, it looked like on Friday night there were going to be some celebrations in Loughborough. With this game in mind, obviously, you know, we'll keep it low key. Oh yeah. See, you know, you've won yeah. now two games against American opposition. How are we celebrating tonight and maybe into? We got a long bus ride home. That's how we'll celebrate. <laughs> okay, well, it's going to be pumping in Loughborough. No, we later. appreciate all the fans for coming out and just we want everybody. We, you know, we're all connected all the time, and so when our fans come out, they give us great energy. And then we, you know, we got good players that are doing the right thing now. And, and when we do the right thing over and over, it just is more fun. And for those players who are, you know, potential future stars who aren't involved in the NFL Academy already, how can they get involved? 
Uh, give me a call. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, we'll be heard it here. You know how we this, play uh, anybody, anywhere, anytime. We're going to recruit anybody, anywhere, anytime. <laughs> so uh, we recruit, uh, you know, we recruit the world outside of America. So we'd love to have you. Absolutely. Well, uh, yeah. great chatting to us. I can still see the Gatorade. Congratulations. More importantly, this is massive <laughs> for you. Oh, it's fun. It's Coach. fun. I, I'm just glad the kids are having a great time. That's the most oh, yeah. important. Yeah, they really are. We've seen At the end some... of this, I'm going to throw a bucket of water on them. Yeah. We'll, we'll, <laughs> let, you, we'll let you go, stuff. Coach Hagen. Thanks for chatting to us. You go, and, you go and get them back. Okay. <laughs> Thank it. you. Uh, I, honestly, you know, seeing everyone celebrating here has been absolutely fantastic. Uh, you know, a stadium where on Sunday night they were taking off the Bills paint on the floor there <laughs> and now putting the academy on here. I mean, it's a legit NFL Stadium, the home of the NFL in the United Kingdom. So to come and play here and do so well is, is a huge occasion. And we're going to bring in uh, one of the other players now. We're going to bring Brian Winter in. If you'd like to come into, into our little booth. Welcome here, to our circle your, of trust. Your teammates <laughs> are uh, taking it all in out on the pitch there. I mean, yeah. honestly, a, a fantastic game for you and the team. How was it? Yeah, it was a great experience just being in Tottenham Stadium. Um, yeah, it's so surreal just standing here. Um, yeah, and we just stuck to our game plan, finished our job, and um, yeah. Okay, we're going to watch your touchdowns on this little screen here. <laughs> so uh, talk us through these moments here. This is probably the first time you've seen these. I mean, so even this right now, you know, what a what a great opportunity in the back of the end zone. Yeah. Is this this is a play that you feel really comfortable with? And your celebration? Did you practice that beforehand? No, it's just it's just something I always have been doing. Mm. Um, so yeah, I mean, yeah, this is the second touchdown. The the ball got caught in the light, so I lost track of the ball for a second, but I still managed to track it down. You did. I mean, so <laughs> what was so wonderful, and for a lot of our fans, you know, they may or may not know. You saw your quarterback there literally telling you where to go. Great, obviously, relationship yeah. that you have with him. Yeah. And you just kept hustling, kept getting it. And even though you did catch the light and there was that little bit of a bobble, you were super laser focused on that and yeah. were able to bring it in. I mean, that must feel like such a great connection between you two. Yeah, I mean, I, lo I love Jack, you know. Uh, we have a great chemistry. And um, yeah, we pretty much think the same. So, <laughs> you know, that's, uh, that's how football goes, yeah. And, and tell us a little bit, you know, people will hear that you've got an accent. So can you tell us a little bit of how you came from Germany to the NFL Academy? Yeah, so, I mean, um, I got recruited by Coach Ian. Um, so, uh, yeah, it was just the whole entire process, just texting back and forth and going through the paperwork and stuff. <laughs> All the fun stuff. Yeah. <laughs> All the so, admin. Yeah. yeah. There'll obviously be a lot of people watching back home and the NFL yeah. now playing games in Germany, which is huge. So to have played here at an NFL stadium in the United Kingdom, you know, the home of NFL, keep saying it, that must be a really proud moment for you and also your family. Yeah. I mean, it's just, just still so surreal just standing here. Like, um, I'm just blessed, you know. It's just really great that I can stand on this field and play with my friends. And um, yeah, I mean, just representing my country um, and yeah, just whole of Germany. Well, uh, we saw the German flag being pointed out on a helmet at one point during the game there, yeah. but congratulations. We'll let you go and celebrate with your friends a little bit more, Brian. Uh, thank, thank you, you very, very much, much for yeah, chatting to you. us. Thank and you. Uh, we'll, we'll bring so we'll let you walk out there, Brian, and we'll, we'll bring someone else in potentially. Do we have anyone else? No? Okay. We, we thought we had someone else, Phoebe. Um, Just for those who want to get involved, and I know the coach said to call him. I wouldn't recommend calling the coach. I think the coach is going to be a little bit busy for the next few hours on that bus, and it's going to be quite a raucous bus going up the M1 back to Loughborough. Um, NFL Academy, you can go online, uh, just search that, and it will tell you all the information you need, how you can get involved. If you know someone that maybe fancies getting involved, uh, who is a young player in uh, potentially in the future, NFL Academy. I mean, how was that out there for you, Dan? Yeah, it was amazing. Um, just to go up against US competition is always great to show our talents. Um, we're just really putting you on the map, showing us we can play, we can compete. Yeah, it was uh, an epic thing to watch. And, you know, obviously we've seen the video of uh, your trip to the USA and, and how amazing that was. And, you know, you've got a, a bit of interest going on there and something happening on Thursday. <laughs> yes, you, you can say just that. Um, yeah, so <laughs> Thursday I'm making my big decision. Oh, I want to take my talents to for the next three, four years. Like, I cannot wait to let the whole world know can't wait to go over and ball out and show what Europe can do and the whole world can do. And that is such a huge step, though. You know, you've gone from the NFL Academy, you're going to make that decision, you're going to tell the world, 
you know, it, and soon we're going to see you bossing it in the NFL. We know it for sure. And you know what? You may come for full circle and you'll come back here to the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. You'll remember the first time you played here. <laughs> and all those guys will be like, you know, this is the first time we played here at Tottenham. Yeah. And you'll be like, yeah, I played there ages ago. Come on, catch up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it was just amazing spirits. Like, the NFL has really helped out. Loughborough College, everyone has just really helped out. Like, to have this experience, just growing the game from us doing flagging schools from us, having the NFL Academy, it's just an amazing opportunity. Like, we're going to grow the sport to a point where Europe, Africa, everywhere in the world starts becoming an extra pipeline for the Division I play NFL players. We're going to grow the sport as much as we can. You know what I mean? <laughs> I do. Obviously, NFL Africa doing some great work, and we saw some of your teammates just there while you were talking, you know, crying out there. Because it does mean a lot to you guys, because you are teammates, but you're also great friends. Yes, yeah, so 100%. One of, one of our guys, Mesh, Mesh Garfield, just got a um, scholarship from Campbell. So he's over the moon. Like, we play, we play ball. <laughs> Shout out to him, he's over there in the cross of the brain right now, but we play ball and we see what happens. Excellent. Well, look, where can people uh, see your big announcement on Thursday? This is your opportunity to plug yourself as much as you like. Yeah, definitely. On all my social media platforms, official grind underscore grind four. Um, I'm going to be doing my um, commitment on Thursday around 2 p.m. on my YouTube channel. So make sure you go and subscribe. Make sure you go to my IG. Make sure you follow the social, follow the journey, man. You don't want to miss anything. There we go. Thank you very much for joining us. Go and celebrate with yeah, your teammates. Celebrate. Of course. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, well, we let you. We're gonna let you run off there. And I mean, Phoebe, I was just sort of mentioning there. You know, for people who want to get involved, NFL Academy. If they're watching at home right now, and it, this has inspired people to get involved, just search that out. And you never know. You know, the development of the NFL Academy finally from 2019 to where we are now playing here in this stadium has been massive yeah it has been and we we heard coach steve we've heard all the athletes here saying you know you you can be from anywhere in the world no matter what your background is you might know nothing about this sport there is an opportunity and there is a place for you whatever your shape size ability is this sport is for everyone and and you could be the next Daniel, you could be the next one of these guys absolutely out here killing it. So congratulations to NFL Academy. What an amazing achievement. Yeah, it's been an absolutely amazing evening. Thank you to everyone behind the scenes. Uh, of course, we'll be back here for a bit of NFL action on Sunday. So if you're a football <laughs> fan and you've not already got a ticket, do everything you can to come and watch the Titans <laughs> against the Ravens. I know Phoebe will be here working on Sky Sports. Uh, but thank you for watching this. And as I say again, NFL Academy, just search that out. You'll find everything you need. Make sure you follow the social media as well. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.